Does anyone say that anymore? They don't, do they? All right. I'm talking to Boat. Who the hell are you? Now I got the Poogie Ann theme stuck in my head. There's worse songs to have stuck in your head. That's true. Like the theme from Severed Heads. <laughs> I thought that was one of the best parts of Severed Heads. So here's here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking from now on, we might need to do the show like this. Put the what, camera right there. Up? Well, <laughs> that that's every week, but... Put the camera right there. We look at each other. We got you got tons of room to spread out. Spread your arms across that desk. Feel the feel the real estate there. I've got my own little zone over here. Whatever you want to do, Boatster. That's just make sure you're not. Hey, uh, we do. I do want to mention that Gary's got a new video out. We should. What? Uh, tell me the name of his YouTube channel. He linked it to me in chat. Okay, so that that, that doesn't help us at all. Because if you go to his normal channel, it's nothing but sewing machine videos. I think he's on, and so if uh, he told me he was going to try to catch the show, so if we see him, we'll ask him. Okay. Because I'm happy to promote his channel. I just he, don't know what it taking, is, and I can't find he's it. He's fixing one of those Commodore 64 SX, like, all-in-one units. He's got one taken apart. So I didn't get to watch the video yet. He just shot, he sent me a note today about it. So, Oh, man. Let's see what we got here. Hey Graham, how's it going, man? Hey, thanks for the Twitch uh, Prime subscription. I appreciate that. Graham's the man. You don't have Prime? Although well, I don't know what Twitch. I guess I don't know what that means. Clearly, <laughs> I would just only caught the end of that. Yeah, uh, Graham, subscribe. If you are a Amazon Prime uh, subscriber, you can subscribe to one Twitch channel for free, uh -huh. but we get the money as if they pay. No shit. Oh shoot. Sorry. And he's also first in the chat. He's a founder and a one-month subscriber. He's what's, everything. What's a good word, Graham? <laughs> I gotta lick him. <laughs> Graham, on? it looks like you had an awesome time over there in Japan, man. Yeah. Man, got back. I feel like we're doing this from now on. This is how we're going to... I mean, obviously, I won't be a frog next week. Well, and I can't be in the shot with you. Oh, no, no, because I'm going to move the camera. But I love being across from you. Like, whenever hey, I look up, this there creep, you are. This creeps me out. Big Your time. visage is right in front of me. What's up, Bill? The card. All of our favorites. Thanks for following us over, man. I feel like... Um, it's You know who does this? Is, there, is that dude, uh, the Nintendo... Uh, Nerd, whatever his name is, and that, you know, Pat the NES punk. Yeah, that's him. Him and his little curly-haired buddy, who they hate everything. They get liquor. We're stealing their gimmick. They, they get liquored up. They hate Listen, everything, man. and they scream at each other. They <laughs> they stole everything that we know. No, they've been around forever, and they people love that crap. People like it when people people like a real angry geek. That's yeah. their that's their hot they, button. And I'm I'm also in that mix because I used to listen to Shane Armand Road. He would get geeked up. And just imagine though, I mean. Uh, you know, Rolfi, he is, he's probably the biggest guy in this space, the video game commentating space. And his Who? name, oh, Rolf, yeah, Rolf. And, and yeah. he's the, he's the angry video game nerd. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, it seems like it's kind of played out. Plus, I don't, well, yeah. hate, I don't hate that much stuff. I like stuff. I'm happy with stuff. Hey, Picard, thanks for hosting us on Twitch. Hey, Brother Bill, thank you for your Twitch uh, subscription, too. What's up, Dunk? Edvin, Edvin must be in the uh, in the back cave hey, Duncan. there. Oh, yeah. Did you see Edvin's drinking Old Speckled Hen tonight? Wow. That's one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite ales, and it's hard to find here. The only place I could find it was that Indian restaurant that's in the old fire station in Charleston. And they're closing that place down. Really? Why? I don't. I guess nobody wants to. Well, the, you know, the, it's the east end of Charleston. What more do you need to say? Hey, Leroy, will you grab me a Mountain Dew while there? Sir, I'm here, sir. Thank you. And you also grab me that koozie right there, too, when you get done. I'm going to advertise the fact that we're live on social media. Grab me a koozie right there beside those dusters. Thanks, dude. Man, I like having a gopher. I am your gopher. And Are your you huckleberry. Are you Hmm. We're never going back to YouTube. Never. Never in a million years. Why? This is where it's at. I mean, aside from the fact that they screwed us, I'll grant you that. That's right. 
You don't cross us twice. You cross us once. Yeah, I, I saw that you also got hosed for the Babylon 5 right. thing last week. Which that I was... <laughs> Listen, I don't know. Man, what in God's name is this? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forget. You can't see what I see. No, I'm looking at Dreamcatch's <laughs> latest offering. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we'll, we'll just briefly mention that, but he has a real article up. But I can't figure out who this is. Who is this? It's Paul McCartney. It is? Yeah. That would explain the Paul. What Does this mean something? No. It's Dreamcatcher being Dreamcatcher. Okay. But he's got a real article up. Yeah, I saw that about Dynamo. I saw it. I saw it. I was okay. Just, okay. But I mean, I saw this a little. I was like, man. <laughs> I thought there'd be just like a story under that to explain what that meant. Look but at yeah. that. See how you're talking to me and you're looking at me? Yeah. I feel this connection that we've never had before. I don't like to look at you when I speak. It's easier to talk to <laughs> bad mouth when I'm not looking at you. <laughs> when I have to look at a guy in the eye and be like, you're a doofus. Look at that stupid sweater. I'm gonna vest. move this whole thing around. Next week you won't recognize Don't this. Don't do basement. it both. Don't why make more work for yourself? It's, it's, it, every year we move to a new location. No, you move the I, I have nothing to do with it. Every year we You've never have asked a new, my opinion. You just do whatever you want. If if it were up to you, what would you do? We would if it was up to me, we'd still not wouldn't have any video. <laughs> We'd still be, that was all you. We'd still be sitting at that table over there with the USB mics right. and talking to Sven right. from Cinevoy. That's right, man. Those are the glorious shows that people... Those are the ones that get the, the big views. Yeah, they are. All right. So, rundown. Here's how it's going to go. Uh, okay, no... Nice. Sorry. Go uh, no news. We go right... How's that possible? I there saw was, news. There, what? Tell I, me I one thing. I don't remember what it was. Right, right, exactly. Um... We go. Uh, we talk about Halloween. Okay, that's the open. Then we go to um, the uh, site updates, aka Dream Catch Up. Okay. Uh huh. Then we go to the game. Then we've got some feedback. Then we do. Uh, maybe in place of news, I should I should talk about Amiga Ireland a little Here's bit. Here's what I think you should do. Okay. Everything you said, except the, where we put news. Just do the go over the videos, and you don't have to do that later. Okay. How's okay. that? Sure. That's, that's sort of like news. It's news we made. What is this? Jacob mm -hmm. Collier at Pay Studio. Is that something to do with Amiga? That's a, little, that's a little something I like to watch on my own time. Oh. So this has nothing to do with Amiga. No, no. That's what threw me. You could talk about your new T-shirts. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about we can talk about that on the news too. In fact. Go ahead. You can, you can uh, advertise all the new models. Oh, what are the? Oh, these are all wadded up. What yeah, happened? that's. Yeah. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it's our highest selling design of all time. That is. That a, thing is flying off. That that thing. That is appalling. That is absolutely <laughs> appalling. Let me forward these things. Yeah, up. I can't thank make you it for pulling this for me. Well, I mean, I don't. I mean, I. I Man, this you is always gonna... think I'm being sarcastic, but oh. I'm not. I'm always serious. No, you're not. Look at this. That's pretty good, I'd say. Yeah. I do enjoy that. So you guys got... Did, now, is this a, a boat and Brent production or just something you came up with? Listen, man. Listen, be careful what you say. Just put them down right here. I, should, I wish I said nothing. Oh, man, look at those. What do you do with those? Give them away. Oh, okay. Are they as cheap as Magnus the ship? Is that the plan? Uh, no, I'll give those away at events. You've got to be in my physical presence to get one of those. Like the Pope. That's right. <laughs> the Pope's always handing out buttons. He's that little... Here, Pope button. Are you in his physical presence? Well, I mean, you have to literally be touching him. You know. Well, why'd you settle upon this particular avatar? Well, this wasn't the only one I this could is, find. I think this is a totally appropriate given your. This was yeah. This was the only course. one I could find where I could I could smoke a pipe and wear a top hat. Yeah, given given your you've released the crack and this is a perfectly excellent. Yeah. All right. Looks like I'm wearing the shirt there too. It. <laughs> it does. That's unbelievable. <laughs> you could have put that in a better spot. I we're need not, to. We're, gonna, uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to have the neon this week. The neon, you know, the amigo sign. Oh, the neon's not there. Sorry. I mean, it don't have to be there. Oh, it's no. got to be there. Got to be there. Had to. Okay. Is the neon gone everywhere? I no, feel the like the, I've got my own show today. You do have your own show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Aaron's Amigos. 
I'm Aaron, and I'm Aaron. What would you do different if you were the only host of Amigos? The first thing i do is spend about 20 minutes just bad-mouthing you. Well, because i got to get that over so people will be like, man, I'm glad that boat's gone. <laughs> that's how it works. That's the way. That's the wrestling way. When Stone Cold Steve Austin left, the first thing I did was have Vince came out and be like, Stone Cold was a sham. <laughs> it didn't work. Did he leave? This is long ago. Yeah, he left one time because he didn't want like the way direction they were taking his character. Mm. They made up when the money stopped coming in. They're like, wait, well, you know, maybe Stone Cold's got a point. And that was how wrestling clawed its way back to number one. Man, Wrestling Wednesday, you dropped the ball, Boaster. That was so much fun. You was it better you than you thought it would be? Oh, God, it was great. It was way better. It was so much fun. It was a party. Did Terry enjoy party. himself? Everyone. It was super duper fun. Fun matches. Fun from top to bottom. Wacky antics. Look at this. I'm going to do this just for you. I'm locking it down. Oops, I just hit you it. Did. I don't know how to work it. We're screwed. I'll just, I can tell this is going to be a, the worst right. produced show of all time. I do need to adjust my advanced tracking configuration. Oh, yeah. Because that is important. Let's get on my... I hope you can see the chat because I can't see nothing. Oh, you can see what I can see. Remember? There we go. Oh, you're not... Thank you, Spence. Let's see. I'm glad someone's rooting for me. I can't see... <laughs> Good one, picks. I gotta get used to all these new names. They're all the same. No, they're not. Every single one of those names not is the when same. You, not when you've got the screen covering yeah. everything but Don Gaming. I was like, what's that? Okay, all I saw was on. Don Gaming? I saw That's on awesome. Gaming. I was like, who's that? That's uh, Brother Bill. Okay. That's Brother Bill. Now we're good. Okay. So creepy. You ready to start the show? Um, I think I am. Let me okay. Just, let me get myself. Should I put on a button just to be yeah, cool? Yeah, put on a button. Can Larry have a button? He's begging Larry for can a have button. a button. He'll make it up tomorrow by saving your butt the game. By the way, I, Evil... I, I, may, I may need to call upon you for assistance tomorrow. Evil Matt will be in at 8 o'clock tonight. He'll be in town. So we'll be good to go tomorrow for the I couldn't understand tonight. why you were saying about how you had to organize the whole role-playing game by yourself. No, I meant getting all, everyone together. Trees, listen, t trust me when I tell you it went bad on okay, me, all right? Okay, okay. I knew you, not to mess with you, you know if this morning. You know if, I, if it goes bad, I will tell you. Oh man, Brother Bill gifted a tier one sub to Picard 2010. I don't know what that means. That's super freaking awesome, is what that is. You'll never be able to be gifted a tier one sub. Is it like a? Is it like a foot long or a six inch? It's like yeah, it's like a party sub. Did you ever get a party sub? Listen, twelve footer. I pilot that sucker. Hmm. Me and Ringo. All right. You ready? Paul Kitching in the hizzy. Eric K, the project. It's not the project. It's the project. Yeah, that's Eric Nelson, man. Man, you know he's in. Yeah, he's in like Flynn. All right, here we go. Means. And three. Now I'm going to switch the scene. We have to be quiet before I switch the scene. Okay. I'm I'm mixing in the the intro for this episode. Okay. okay go ahead and put your put your mask on. Take the bass line out. No. You don't have to. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. Oh, jeez, Boat. I'm Aaron. And uh, it's me. welcome to Amigos. Aaron, welcome to our fifth annual Halloween Spooktacular. Uh, Aaron, this week we're going to be talking about two games that undoubtedly rank among the Amiga's finest. Mm. Severed Heads and Clive Barker's Nightbreed, the oh, yeah. interactive movie. Oh, it's interactive. Now, Aaron, before we get into talking about this week's uh, news and everything, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and talk a little bit about... I want to hear about the Halloween costume from your youth that you remember the most. It's funny you should mention that, uh, little buddy, because I was just commenting with uh, Uncle Leroy on our trip here. My kid, we went out and got my son. We went out and bought, they were closing out costumes. And for five bucks, we got this little ninja suit, all right? A costume. 
And so we put it on him, and it's this awesome Mortal Kombat style, like full on ninja suit, mm-hmm. right? Ninja mania. A ninja could put this on and go kill a sucker, right? And I thought to myself, for five bucks, we got this thing. When I was a kid, all the suits were garbage. They were garbage. They were just like this Morty mask. It was a big plastic gimmick. You got this string in the back, right? You know, I'm talking about the elastic string. Oh, yeah. String. Oh, yeah. And, and, and what you do, I'll tell you the first thing I always did. Yeah. Tongue right through the mouth hole, cut your tongue. That's right. Yeah. Because you got to put the tongue in you there. You got to. Because the tongue see, searches out in the openings and just, it, it's like a snake. So anyway. Right. You got the, you got the mask. And then, did you get a cool ninja suit? No. If I was going to be a ninja, which they didn't exist when I was a kid, <laughs> but let's pretend they did. Like, I was Spider-Man one year, right? Spider-Man mask, and then and, and this is a haggard old tale, but it's true. Then you got the plastic bib gimmick, all right? And then you put this thing on, and it had a picture of Spider-Man doing something. Well, and even as a little kid, I was like, wait a minute, Spider-Man wouldn't wear a picture of himself on it. Where's Unlikely. my Spidey outfit? Well, right. they didn't exist. You got the old plastic gimmick you tied on, and it sucked, and you felt like a dork. It's almost like an apron. That's you know, right. Say, yeah. And so there was, so there were two types of kids. All right, there was the apron wearing dork kid, and then you had the uh, parents gave it a shot to make a costume. Now mm-hmm. some parents are super creative, right? And then you'd see kids come out and they have like homemade outfits that look pretty good, but often it looked like like morons. Like their parents were like doing a, you know, they tried. But once a year, it doesn't make you a seamstress, you know what I mean? Well, so Aaron, I'm glad pool. that you brought that up because I have pulled from the archives mm-hmm. a, a glimpse into Boat's past. Oh, my God. Okay. So this this comes from, I think, 1989. You had a perm back then? This is not me. Oh, okay? I'm sorry. You're the kid. This is the Halloween parade coming out of Hurricane Town Elementary School yeah. in 1989. Okay? Yeah. So get ready. Is that you? <laughs> that was not me. Right there. <laughs> Boat of car. In the homemade Halloween <laughs> costume my mom stitched for me. Could you see in that? I could not see anything because the eyes were not properly aligned. So you can see my hand here <laughs> reaching out for the, for the pole in between so I could see and make that my is, way through the door. You know, in all honesty, that is not bad. Yeah. My mom it's, actually she did she did pretty well. Now As this seems see, like a still, this seems like a big mistake right there. <laughs> no, did, how did that turn out? Did you fall on your head? Yeah, that, that part was not captured on tape. So <laughs> That's good stuff right there. That was, yeah. I, and your mom did a good job. Well, thank Maybe you. Maybe it's just thank the, you. the problem with the costume was your face was weird. It, it was. It was it, it's right. always been misshapen. And yeah. That's, that's an Bulbous, issue. Bulbous, yes. I think some would say. Plus the ears. Yes. It yes. happens, you know. So do you remember the very last time that you you went out with the, with the bag trick-or-treating? Absolutely. And, and, and tell me what happened. Me and my cousin Willie went out, and I believe, I can't remember if I was a sophomore or a junior in high school. When we went out, because yeah, we just kept on going. But that last year wasn't so much about candies; it was about throwing eggs at people's houses. That's mm-hmm. what we did. So yeah, we did that. Mm. I went. In fact, it was in my current neighborhood, and we went out and eggs. We ate some cars. We ate some houses, and then we did get uh, some candy. I'm trying to think. I don't. I dressed as a hobo for the last few years. It was hobo. It was all hobo. Because we had a hobo man. Did anybody come up to you and say, "Listen, man, it's time. You need to stop." Trick or treating? Absolutely not, because there was no deadline on that. They were a lot more. Most of them you sort of outgrow it. It's funny I've heard if you're listening to Flax, one of Flax episodes of you don't know Flax, he talks about like being too old to go trick or treat, and then you do eventually it hits you. It's like okay, time to stop. Usually it's like when you can drive a car, you're probably too old. It's <laughs> probably know? true, yeah. But we would go out and uh, we went out for years. I mean, listen, it was candy, man, and it was. Uh, plus, you just grow up doing it now. I've heard some places they have a cut hard cutoff of like twelve. I just really? heard that on the radio, like, but it's loosely enforced, mm-hmm. you know. But nobody's uh, checking IDs. I think twelve's a little bit too young. I think it would be like I wouldn't have a hard cutoff at all. Really, I think you just keep going until you want to stop. But probably if you, I mean, I'd say 16. if you're bringing your if you if you're bringing your kid and you're also trick or treating, it may be too late. I will say I go out with the kid every year. I've never missed one, and this year will be no exception, as you know. Uh, and I have dressed up with him occasionally, just for fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'll do that this year. Uh, but uh, uh, it's always a good time. I always go around. Of course, I usually hold the I'm like a ca- the candy caddy. Right. Well, you know what? I've heard from my students who are in middle school 
is that they've they've got the racket down because they've been doing this long enough. They get their parents to follow behind slowly in the car with big garbage bags, and then when as soon as their small bags get full, they dump in it into the big garbage bags. Next house they go to, oh, you don't have any candy. Let me give you some extra. Now see, they that's, know that's being who's your kids said that you're told you told me that you just got done egging houses and cars, and you're telling my kids are not doing it well, right. Well, you you gotta understand something. First of all, that's lame. Your kids are all lame, and so if, any, if any of your kids are watching this, that's lame. Having your parents, first of all, your parents need to be less lazy. Get out of the car, brother. If I'm a big tubby dude, and I'm making the rounds, and with a garbage bag, that's weak. And secondly, when I was a kid, there was it was called trick or treat for a reason, man. You were like there were. It's not like I just randomly egged at people that I liked. It was the jerks that were getting it. Oh, you you don't keep your dog out and he bit me. Here's your egg, sucker. Mm, so you weren't oh, indiscriminately egging. Or like, hey, you don't have any candy again this year? Here's your egg. You know, mm. or like, oh, you're just a jerk neighbor. Here's your eggs. How many? How many? Approximately, how many people are we talking about here? Ninety oh, percent of your neighborhood. Five people, maybe. You know, it was a that last year was like it was a I would say it was a token effort. The years before that, it was pretty much just candy. It wasn't a whole lot of that other stuff. Mm. Have you ever TP'd a house or aged anybody? I, 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 I I've strayed from vandalism most most of my life. Oh, uh, please. You know, I, I was scared of the people that did that sort of thing. They frightened me. And so, well, here I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm frightened of you. Yeah, I don't blame you. You're not the first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron. Shall we talk about this week's uh, side updates? We got we're going to do a double helping of side updates this week because unfortunately the gamble train is passed right on by, Aaron. There is yes. no Amiga news worth talking about. However, as you can tell by this uh, lovely piece of apparel below me, we have some real life examples of our new T-shirts right here on the table, Aaron. So, well, let's. Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll just show them off here a little bit. These actually turn out. Hey, first of all, if, just so you won't miss it this week. Toot, toot, there it goes. <laughs> I'm sure the official t shirt. Well, spread it out, unfold it, unfurl it for the masses. Look there at it that. is. It's the, it's the Gamble Train, the official. I've never understood this weird thing, but people now, love the, the Gamble, Gamble Train. Train shirt has been on the market for less than a week. It's already our highest selling design of all time. That's, well, I, I don't know what that says about that. <laughs> um, let, me move, let me move Morty out of the way here. We've also got hot off the presses, and if you're into this sort of thing, we've got your Coco. I actually kind of like, I think these are kind of fetching. Actually. Yeah, it's a Coco yeah, show. Coco show shirt. You know, if you're into that sort of thing. And then, uh, speaking of Coco, is another, I like this. This is the little Coco mascot guy. Your little buddy. That's real good, Luke. Uh, Luke. This is a real good buddy. I like that's a nice looking, uh, nice looking Thank shirt. Thank you. I'll, I'll be modeling that next week. And then, the oh boy. And then, of course, here you've got the big daddy here. I like this one myself quite a bit. This is your. This is your straight up. R. Sinclair. R. Sinclair shirt. Whoops, That's I got it backwards excellent. on it. What do you think? It's a blackout, eh? Uh, <laughs> How much more black could it be? There you go. All R. right. Sinclair, yeah. so. And uh, if you like those, you can get them all over at AmigaTees.com. There you go. .com. All right, Aaron, let's talk about what's been going on on our YouTube channel, huh? Let's, let's get to our... our uh, our site update real quick. Okay, here. well we can time. do that first. Either and way, what you've got here is you're going to see two site updates, but <laughs> one of them is what I call an insane one <laughs> from from the master of insanity. Uh, so Dreamcatcher has uh, an interesting tale here on Dynamo. Have you ever seen this particular? Uh, gimmick here. I've I not. Just... I, I've not seen Captain Dynamo before. This is an Amiga game. I did read this article, uh -huh. and um, this looks like is that. Oh, like, maybe it's because he shows some some screenshots of the Spectrum version. Yeah. But it, it, it definitely does not take advantage of the Amiga hardware. Hey, that Batman so. looks eerily similar to you. Hey. It looks like Baldrick. I know where you got that idea. If you, ever, if you know who Baldrick is, apparently they got him playing Robin. That's what that looks like. <laughs> Baldrick from Black Adder is your Robin there. I saw that he'd been knighted. That, that amused me. Look at this. This is the review. Overall, Captain Dynamo is a bit of a stonker. What does that mean? A stonker? Because I've heard stonk in several contexts in the UK. <laughs> this is a word that has not yet crossed the Atlantic. Um, is it good or is it bad? I don't think it's good. Mm. Also, one of the articles refers that says this name. This uh, one of the parts that says the game should be called Captain Dud, mm. which is. <laughs> <laughs> That's never a good sign. No. Captain Dud. Uh, but uh, this looks. This one doesn't look that great, does it? But no. Actually, no. I will say that the, the Spectrum title screen looked better than any of the other parts of the game. So, yeah, not so good. But, yeah, of course it's not good. That's what Dreamcatch is here for. <laughs> He's in the Mystery Science Theater of, of, of crappy games. Absolutely. So Absolutely. So check him out. And then if you're feeling particularly funky, 
You can check out his Halloween offering, which is a quick look. He's made a lovely drawing that, that, that you'll enjoy. Uh, let's move along to the site updates, Bo. What do you have for us this week? We've got a, we've, we've done some stuff on the YouTube. In fact, yeah. We did a lot on the YouTube this week, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Despite their screwing of us. Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, we should talk a little bit about uh, the, I don't, let's see, we talked about the Jupiter Ace last week. I made an easy and quick guide to emulation on the Tandy Color Computer. If you're, uh, if you're a frequent listener, or even just an occasional listener of the Coco Show, and you would like to uh, emulate uh, the, uh, the mighty Coco on your PC, uh, I looked online and there was not much uh, information out there on how to get going. So this is just a quick little six minute uh, video on how to uh, download Mess UI, get the system ROMs, uh, load them up, and actually how to launch the games themselves. Yeah, good job, eh? So, uh, I liked it. Yeah, uh, we're, we're hoping that, uh, you know, one of the aims of the Coco Show is to introduce more people to the wild and wonderful world of the uh, Tandy Color Computer. And so this is, uh, this is the easiest way I know to jump right in. I like the fact that several of the people in our uh, Discord have sort of. There's a lot of people that are getting, including yourself, are getting on board. So I feel like there's. There, I like having like a, an Amiga user influx. Right. We're, we're, we're bringing it down. Over, we're bringing the Amiga side over the Coco. So it's kind of fun. You will be remembered of all time. They'll be like, "Did you hear about Aaron Dowdy?" And they'll say, "Aaron, he's the guy that brought the Coco back." I'm like the Johnny Appleseed of Coco. You are. You are. Except I'm not. There's, a, there's a huge gun, community that, 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 that's no been around none. forever that's taking care of that. We're just like the Johnny Come Lately of, of, of the of the Coco world. So I thought that was that was kind of neat. Uh, Aaron, you also released a, a couple Amigos Plays videos here. Uh, this is, I guess we're we're calling them Coco Show Plays. Yeah. Uh, these are uh, shot shot from ground zero itself, the computer room of doom. Oh man, at Casa de Aaron. And uh, you recorded some plays of Downland and Apocalypse, last week's Amigos game. Yeah, now Downland's a fun game. I think a lot of people really were surprised by how fun that was for the Coco. And then mm -hmm. Apocalypse, since we did it last week, uh, it's funny, I recorded this sort of early in the week and uh, when I was kind of coming to grips with it, but it was fun. And uh, uh, I thought, you know, I'll knock one of these out because now that I've got a good setup for the uh, Amiga to, to, I mean, it's been a long time coming to be able to do good Amiga, you know, captures. You know that, what mm. I've gone through. Oh, so yeah. you can see that's a pretty darn clear. It's a sharp, sharp yeah. image right and so there. It's, um, thank you. Hey, it's, and that's coming off the live 1200, right? Oh, yeah. All mm. my stuff from Evermore is going to be all real Amiga stuff. And in fact, real Amiga, real Coco, real Tari. I'm just, I'm emulation. I'm, I'm out the door. We're not, done not, with that. Not, I'm not doing anything against it. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I did like this game. I got better at it. And this actually was not, there's, there's me hitting that invisible platform that I hate. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had a good time doing this, uh, and uh, just look for lots more of these because it's it it's a lot easier and crisper to do. Now, hey, again, you know, I feel like a doofus because for years everybody was like, use the SCART cable and the thing, and I'm like, ah, you know, SCART, we're gonna go down that road with the SCART. But really, the SCART, hey, the SCART worked, brother, and the little gimmick, the cheapo gimmick off of uh, Amazon, and I was in business. The hardest thing to find was a halfway decent, cheap. Uh, HDMI well, I was gonna uh, say, digitizing. Yeah, you, you got to spend some money to get to get something of quality. But hey, hey, listen, uh, this is your disc. This is your uh, Patreon money at work. That's I went and got because I wanted. I was like, you know, I feel like I'm shortchanging people by not playing these games on the actual computer and mm -hmm. doing it. So th that's what. So here we're at. So Man, it's you be, just totally destroyed all those civilians. Well, no, right those there. aren't civilians. Those are the guys. Oh no, there the were some, there were some guys in white that you just totally Let me tell you blew something. away. When the civilians are mixed in with the bad guys with the missile launchers, they get smashed. <laughs> that's true. There's an artillery cheap shot mm. again that was last week go back if you want to see me bad mouth a pocket but I, mean, I liked it i thought it was a pretty pretty good game there actually uh, all things considered dude yeah and finally we did release a new coco show last week uh this one is based on downland which we talked about just a second ago and xenix xenix has got to be the most impressive shooter on the coco computer yeah, man that was it a is one. so freaking good it's very so arcade it's good. very arcade coin op like there's just crazy explosions uh, yeah, we had a good time with these, and Downland was, I, think, I actually like Downland more than this, but they were both great. Yeah. This is the, off the charts graphically, but they were both good. Hey, like I said, I like a good, uh, I like a good uh, platformer, and I like a good shooter, especially when you've got a shooter that gives you a little uh, vertical up and down. I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. All right, Aaron, the time has come to move on to this week's games. The, I, 
it's all it's it's a struggle to even know where to start with these. I'm but glad, I, I, I wish guess I severed let's heads. start with severed That's heads. okay because actually you know listen. Halloween, as you know, if you follow the Amigos for the, how, gosh, how many of these have we done now? Four? This is our fifth okay, so, Halloween spectacular. And so you can tell, because what you do when you're, in, when you're a podcast or a video show is you start with the, the worst stuff and work your way up to the best stuff. And we've done it again this year. Just when you thought, man, you can't get any better Halloween material, here it comes. The finest Halloween material money can buy right here. That's right. So uh, I had never heard of Severed Heads. And so it didn't sound promising, to be honest with you, when I read the title. Uh, and I guess it was the, the game selection committee. Are they behind? Are they everyone's They're behind everything we so, do every so week. So make sure all your make sure to let all your fan mail is, is directed at the at the people. <laughs> <laughs> you Direct all selection. your fan mail. You to can tell by that AGSC. picture that, that, that this is a quality game. Yeah. So that's probably the finest detail graphics of anything in this oh, whole yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, so. This was released in 91, and the publisher, this Sir Ra, uh, you'd be stunned to realize they didn't do a whole lot, which I'll get into that in, in a moment. Uh, the coder artist on this, uh, a fellow named Michael Zerbo, uh, was responsible for these uh, uh, some fine games. I'll just go down the list of the other two. Dark Obsession, and my personal favorite, always break this one out at Christmas, Boat, The Child Murderer. A lovely fan. Man, I know if I was at this store looking for a new game to play, that's the one I'd pick off the shelf yeah, first. Yeah. Uh, and he, I guess, I'm assuming this is his brother, Christopher Zerbo, gra- uh, did some of the graphics along with uh, Joseph and Ken Harris. So you had, looks like maybe a couple brothers were involved in this thing. Uh, what you've got here, Boat, is a, it's a text adventure with pictures. All right, that's what you've got. Um, now, before we get into the meat of the game, <laughs> because there's not much meat on the bone. I do. I was just looking. I was like, let's try to find some information. This because this is one. Oh, wait a minute. How do you feel? How do you feel about that Dead Eye Dick song? She don't eat meat, but, but she, she sure like, like the bone. bone. I don't like it that much. You don't like it. Although that much. I think it was wasn't that in. Uh, that was a long. I'll tell you what that was in. That. that was in the that was in the Hurricane Skate Arena. That's uh, where I heard that. Oh wow, most. that was well after I was out of Skate Arena. I think that wasn't that in Dumb and Dumber. Probably. That song in there. So. Here I am, I'm looking for stuff on this game, okay? And I come upon a random forum post, okay? So, uh, and this guy mentioned that he'd been looking through the forums, and he'd seen this, and and it was some amusement. And he said, listen, he goes, I wrote this game. (laughs) Michael Zerbo. And so... Uh, he, he, he goes into some detail about the background, so I thought it might be interesting to kind of go over this, because it's kind of funny. Uh... I couldn't find any decent review. I couldn't find any reviews, but I did say I did find. Uh, he did mention that Amiga World had reviewed this. I couldn't find it, and they gave it a good score. This is one of the few games we've looked at on Lemon that has no score. Mm. Like no one has played this game. He also mentions that uh, the publisher, which was Sir Ra, cheated him and the artist from any royalty, so he never saw any money from this at all. Sir Ra, not a good dude. Yeah, yeah. They also were, Sir Ra also tried to make a PC version of this, but they didn't tell him. <laughs> and but it didn't happen. So uh, he said he, he said that Syrah had had uh, claimed that he that a larger publisher wanted this game, but they needed to update the parser because and admittedly the parser this is pretty tiny for a text game. But it didn't. But he's not sure if that's true or not. No but, way. Yeah, I know. So he released this game for free himself on the net. So if you want to play Severed Heads, you can go. go for it. You can go get it. All right. He also mentioned that the child murderer, the children murderer, whatever it was called, what was it called? I don't child get murderer. I don't want to get his name wrong. Yeah, the child murderer is avail- was sold in Australia and New Zealand as a super budget title. I don't know what, super budget title. Boy. But he says it's <laughs> With very, a title like that and super budget attached. Yeah. He said uh, it, it also was, it was released on a PC. They changed the name because they said the name might affect sales. No kidding. You know, so he also mentioned that this game's buggy, but it's not nearly as buggy as this game Dark Obsession, which was insanely buggy. And so, it, so he's mostly everything he released. This is his number one game, Severed Heads. So he now, so he ended up doing some work and made and he ported some of these games over to PDAs. If you can believe, if you can believe well, that. Uh, oh, yeah. So okay, I thought that was pretty. I thought that, that was, was a pretty hot market there, the old Palm Pilot market for gaming. Yeah. Um, he said that this, as far as he knows, 
Severed Head only sold two or three hundred copies worldwide. So you're not going to probably see a copy of this anywhere if you were to look. Uh, he says the PC port of the child murderer is much better. <laughs> So if you're looking to get in, get on board, oh boy. if you want to get, I, where's that port comparison? If you're looking to get on board with the Zerbo uh, Express, you could go, you can go hunt down the child murderer for the PC. But they remove again, they also remove the child, so it's just called the murderer. Probably a good move. Yeah, yeah no kidding, man. <laughs> John Wayne Gacy, the simulator. You know, uh, something else he mentions is that uh, um, he was very proud of the fact that this thing had uh, you, basically this will tell you the story. I don't know if it you will ever, tell you, you ever, the story. Did you use that? No. Uh, so I thought that was kind of neat. He also said he finds occasionally to his surprise that his games are released by other publishers. Like, but he didn't, for, and with no consent or anything. Well, if didn't. Sir Ross screwed him, why not everybody? Well, I, that seems to be the uh, that seems to be the way they're looking at it. Now, I looked I, just for fun. I looked at Zer, Michael Zerbo's credits. You know, because because we know Severed Heads, we know Dark Obsession. He allegedly did a game, but I can't find anything about called Inner Demons on the Amiga. He did a game for the Amiga called A Matter of Time. It was also it was formerly shareware. I don't know what formerly shareware. I guess now it's freeware. He did the Child Murderer. That was also on the Amiga, uh, but I didn't I haven't seen it anywhere. And he did the Hollywood Murders and my favorite one, 2003. He released this for on the Amiga. Dames are trouble, brother. I know what you're saying there, pal. I can understand that. So. <laughs> A little bit behind this game. So you can see this game was released under perfect conditions with a helpful... Conditions are perfect. With a helpful publisher ready to back him all every step of the way. So, this game... This is a graphic adventure that's a text adventure with some graphics. It's a lot like that Cthulhu game we covered, except not in the same league of goodness. Did we cover a Cthulhu game? Yeah, actually, you weren't here for that. I oh, think it was okay. me and Brent that okay. covered that one. So, text with graphics. So, maybe you were here for that one. But anyway, in this game, you basically, it takes place in the future. And in the future, they've found a way to uh, basically uh, keep people alive by growing these bodies they could transfer their head to. Mm -hmm. All right? What a deal. I guess you've got a great body and an old head stuck on it. This is uh, like the Mountains of Madness. And I believe they said that the, your new body will last two years. I think that's what they said. So I don't know. I guess you got to be going through bodies pretty qu pretty quick. Well, you just grow a bunch. I know? guess you just keep it's them sort of in the like closet. underpants. Yeah. You know, you have a bunch of them set up there. Now, that, another problem with this is that uh, it, occasionally it goes south and weird things happen. So. At the beginning of this, you are you play a, a surgeon that does these operations, and so the early parts of this game are you. I guess this is so you'll learn this how this thing works. Or it's you getting your equipment, you going to the emerge to the operating room, you washing your hands, you uh, putting on your surgical clothes, you perform this. It's funny you go all through these, all this rigorous crap to get the surgery, and then when you actually go to the surgery, it's like. Uh, it's basically it's like do surgery. It's like okay, it went great. <laughs> I thought that was weird. I was like, wait a minute, that's all. You don't actually perform the surgery. You just have to. It's it's several well, commands he, about how to wash your hands. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it, uh, yeah. and so uh, anyway, there is some intrigue when the guy you worked on suddenly uh, that he, everything went well, head transferred, good to go, and then the guy they find out later the guy's dead. Yeah, he died. So, and the guy, and what, one of the surgeons walks up to you and says, "Try to do better next time, or be more careful." That's what he says. It's like, what a jerk. Yeah, the old pat on the back. No, he said, no, he, they tells you, be more careful. Oh, yeah. Like it's your fault Passive that the guy aggressive. died. What yeah. a jerk. So anyway, this devolves into a crazy, uh, which I I'm, admittedly I didn't get much real far in this game, but I did get to the point where you're. Uh, eventually, you're out in this alley, and you find the body, and someone had done a bunch of work on it, and, you, and your guy's out in the alley with a scalpel, carving, opening him up, and pulling stuff out of the old body to see what's going on, because he's a surgeon. It's a real weird tale, uh, and then inter inter uh, sprinkled with the tale will be graphics. The graphics in this were hilarity, because a lot of... Now, some of them were like hand-drawn, looked okay, mm -hmm. but occasionally, they would just digitize some picture and then sort of take like d paint like let's put there, there's a guy in this that they they gave a new face okay there's i mean there's, they took a picture of a guy and then they they took like the biggest fattest brush and d paint and gave him eyebrows and a mustache <laughs> and i mean it looks so stupid it looks i just looked at it, i was like are you kidding me but it's funny and there's a lot of stuff like that there's, there's one part of this like <laughs> your guy's sort of a jerk i guess 
So he finds an old cat in an alley that's like dead. He brings it back to life, which is nice. Then he goes out and he takes all the stuff he put out of the other body and sticks it in the cat. Sticks it in the cat. Right. You remember that part? Oh, the yeah. cat freaks out. The cat he breaks the cat's neck. Right. And then they show a digitized picture of a little kitty. Yeah. Kid that's that's pissed off. At what point do you just turn off? I mean, if if I'm playing this for fun, um, you know, at what point do I just turn this off because this is no longer fun? I don't. <laughs> Listen, being a frog, that's got to appall you because frogs are often dissected. Well, or whatever you are, I, I do have some unpleasant, uh, you know, dreams about that. That's one of my nightmares is being dissected. Well, you know, listen, they might take you apart just to see what's going on with your lung to throw that smoke in you're doing. So, anyways, uh, this is a weird game. I, I, I didn't. I played this thing. For, I will admit, I played this for like three hours. And, oh and my gosh. by the way, uh, well, I mean, you're a braver man. Listen, than you've got to do it. You know, you got to do no, it. Well. And so I, I did it. And I will say, uh, you can use basic commands, and the parser is pretty rigid on this thing. Yeah. And a couple of times I had to get labor more than a you few gotta times. Remember, this is 1991, and this thing, the parser is like straight out of Zork. You know, straight out of some no, old terminal. No, it ain't Zork thing. level. It's it's. I mean, this thing's the parser is not that good. I think it's a 500 word parser. I think the guy said it's awful. It's yeah. Awful. And so I had to cheat a lot. I admit that. Uh, but you know it is what it is. There's a in fact if you're watching the live, there's a picture of the operating room. And there's the laser. Uh, the, it's a haphazard. Or the, that picture doesn't make me want to have surgery in this hotel, in this hospital. <laughs> um, you also have sort of a, a romantic interest, sorta. Of. It's mm-hmm. hard to see where it's going. But I, I think I, I played. Long well, she right. makes you dinner at some point, but, but I think she's yeah. sort of evil. Yeah, I think. Well, but she I dies I later on. I didn't, so it doesn't oh, matter. I didn't, I didn't watch that for. Right, I watched I, the whole thing. Yeah, I, you watched the whole thing. Yeah. Um, what did you think of this boat? This might be the worst game we've ever done. No. I would rather play Top Banana than play Severed Heads. Oh, Top Banana is... What would you... What, what, if Listen, this isn't the worst game we've no, ever done, what I, is it? Well, we haven't done our second game today, which is on my list. It's way better. But, but here's the thing. It's a text adventure. It, it, it's, it's okay. I, I think it's okay. I, really, I think it's an, it, the tale is interesting. I mean, the parser Here's the is problem. short, but Here's I mean, the, the actual tale isn't bad. You got to give it that. Well, n- yeah, I will give it that. But in 1991, I expect more from a text adventure game. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to type full sentences in, and I want this thing to understand me. Um, if we're gonna have graphics, I want graphics all the time. I want Queen of the Desert. That's what I want. You know, I want some game where half the screen is text and half the screen is a graphic and I want the graphics to change. This is like, how few graphics can we put in this thing to put it on the box? You know, it's like they took just enough screenshots so they could put screenshots on the back of the box. I don't even know. I, did you say this was a shareware only no. release? Okay, no, this, this was, was a real commercially release. released game. Well, sort of. He got screwed by the publisher. Right. So. Um, the graphics that they do choose to put up are oftentimes bizarre and you know there's a there's a lot of stuff going on in this i will give you that the story is interesting okay <laughs> but i mean there's a lot of interesting novels that are a heck of a lot where but you know better written um look like that that if you're watching the video version of this that you've got mr billows who is a straight up digitized black and white picture the art style is not it's not um across it's the board. yeah it's random but i mean that i think that's what makes this this is as close you, as you can get to shareware or something you just made by yourself. But it's just good enough to where you can say, well, you could maybe release it. It reminds me, you ever you ever been like a concert or something, and there's a dude in the parking lot, and he's got a station wagon, and he's got the back door open, he's selling his own stuff. Oh, yeah. And you're like, he's like, come on, five bucks, it's a good album, it's just like what you saw inside. And, you, and you're like, well, you know, maybe I'll take a chance. Mm-hmm. And you go home, and maybe you went and saw, like, Slayer. And this is this is more like... You know, a Slayer half speed with a guy that could sort of only kind it's of play like guitar. Like a, yeah, and so that. But you're like, well, it's okay. It's something like kind of like an actual band. Mm-hmm. That's what this game is. It's sort of like an actual game. And the, <laughs> what I like, I can't of, think of any better praise. Listen, what than I that. like about it is, is, is the the random photos so that makes it better because they're so. I mean, I like the fact that a dude took a dude's picture, and I'm hoping this is one of the programmers on this mm-hmm. picture. And they just took the brush and just did the eyebrows and the mustache. I'm just like, yes, that looks it does, great. It, it, it this game. game, this game probably is the Manos, the hands of fate. No, it's more like an games. Ed Wood. That's where because I mean, Manos is not that bad. But Ed Wood would like he would he would do stuff that was sort of important, but he'd sort of do a half job. 
And that's what this is. It's a half job. And the story is sort of interesting. I didn't hate this. I didn't hate it. I mean, it was it was hideous. Let me rephrase it. But I mean, it's not like you said it was a worse game. No. Because Don't it, tell me what a, be, a worse game than this than we played on this show then. I really, well, I will get to it. I hated it. First person pinball is worse. I mean, a lot worse. It's unplayable That's garbage. That's true. It is unplayable garbage. So, uh, you know, there's that. But, I mean, although that was, they tried something out of the box. Tinsoft presents. But I'm just saying, if you play, if you, let's pretend this is, if they'd said, look, here's your new graph, it's your new text game. That's all it is, like a Zork. And you played it. It wouldn't be the worst game you ever played. It'd be like, oh, okay, it's a text game. The plot's interesting, sort of, you know. It's sort of, a, you, you do a lot of stuff, like all the stuff that leads up to the important stuff is sort of mundane and goofy. But it, you know, you get somewhere eventually. So overall, I'm not going to kill it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, in terms of uh, the ability to, well, let's put it this way. I didn't find this on eBay. I know you're stunned, Boat. <laughs> and I don't think, I, I did not, I didn't find any reviews of this anywhere. Including, really? Including on Lemon, where they have uh, no reviews. So someone, I'm begging one of our fine well, listeners. To beg get, no longer, my friend. Because... Uh, we do have. Here we go. Uh, we do have some reviews. Oh, for this God one. bless you, Graham. You've done it okay. again. It's not just Graham. Oh, you're kidding me. More than one person played Severed Heads. Chris Folds led the charge. Oh man, he's gonna hate it, isn't he? Imagine a terrible text adventure written by a high school kid, where after one minute you couldn't care less. Then make it a little worse, and you have Severed Heads. Oh man. Spend your time doing something else, but just don't play this game. One out of ten. And Graham W. Bebke, fresh off his flight from Japan. You can imagine this was one of the first text adventures written by the author, but sadly it's not. This story had no substance, and I guess people are only drawn to it by the subject matter. There's some red text on a background, black background in the game, which makes reading this, and reading is probably the most important part of a text adventure game, even more challenging than trying to continue to play this. One out of ten. Not high praise from our right. Amigos Retro Gaming you know, Discord community. I will say one thing in closing when we close the door on this one. I couldn't get this to work on emulation. It would only work on my actual authentic Amiga 1200. So, uh, good luck. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> or you can save yourself some trouble and just load up a, uh, a YouTube Let's Play from no. our boy Hipponius. Uh, and it, he to, to crank up the awesome, he turns on the text-to-speech yeah. so you can hear the computer read the you know, speech. It's I, like you're there. I think everyone's too hard on this. I thought that was I, I thought the subject matter was sort of interesting. I mean, the name sucks. But, I mean, and some of the art's okay, and it's funny. I, I would like to see somebody... We're going to go opposite ways because I, I want to hear your thoughts on the next game. Okay. Let's anyway, move someone, on. Anyway, someone go leave a review on Lemon and tell them the Amigo sent you. <laughs> Be the first. Let's talk about Nightbreed, the interactive movie. Now, Aaron. amazingly, both, and this is a rarity, I've actually played this in my, back in the day. Really? Yes, I did. Um, so, Nightbreed, the interactive movie. Now, we got to differentiate, and I'm hoping next year we'll cover the action game. Nightbreed has two games on the Amiga, the interactive movie and the action game. And we looked at the interactive movie. Yeah, so we, we didn't did. Look at the action game. Now, well, we looked at the action game before. That was like Halloween spooktacular. Oh, we too. actually looked at the action game already? I'm pretty sure we did because you going. told your Nightbreed story. I've told that this year. I break that one out every once in a while. I don't know. So anyway, Nightbreed. Tell your Nightbreed story. Well, Aaron. I told it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I, I was in a theater. I saw this movie by myself in an empty theater and thought I saw a haunted guy go to the bathroom. Yeah. That's a short version. So... Nightbreed, the interactive movie. Now, we're going to talk about Nightbreed, the actual movie, before we talk about the the interactive movie, because you've got to get some basis for Nightbreed, the interactive movie. Now, first of all, Boat, I'm assuming you've not seen Nightbreed. I have not film. seen Nightbreed, but from what I could tell, um, this is, or from what people on the Discord were saying, is that this is more of a, um, or maybe it was on the... I don't know where I were. I think it was on the Discord. They were saying it's more of a monster movie than a straight-up horror flick. Would you agree with that? No. Okay. No, I wouldn't agree with that. So, uh, this movie was directed by the much-heralded, and written by him too, Clive Barker. I'm not a big fan of the Bark Man, I'll be honest with you. And none of his crap. Well, over. he caught that ball that kept the Cubs from winning the series. No, wrong guy. Mm. Although that guy, well, this is also a miss. Uh, this was a big mistake. I, this guy, uh, the Clive Barker... Basically, this was supposed to be the first of a trilogy of films. All right. Um, so, and this is also, by ironically, this is supposed to be, this is one, this is two thirds, it was supposed to be a trilogy of right. games. Right. It was supposed to be a trilogy. Yeah. So, 
Uh, this movie uh, came out in February 16th of 1990, the film, 102 minutes. Uh, and the budget on this on this uh, dog, 11 million bucks, and they only brought back worldwide 8.9. So they took a bath on the night breed, right? And so the, the premise of night breed is goofy, I think. Uh and it, I'm not not to go fully into the film, but basically, it's it, you it, the character, the main character, thinks he's going crazy, and he has been going to a, a therapist who has sort of convinced him that he's been killing a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. When in actuality, the therapist is sort of like, as I recall from seeing it, sort of drugging him, and the therapist, oh by the way, is the murderer. So he's basically hanging this guy out to dry, and also just being a jerk, a psychological jerk. I hate. These People are the worst kind of jerks. Screw, it's screwing with him, right? Yeah. And so, long story short, this guy ends up in his graveyard because he hears about this crazy, mystical world of monsters. And this creature bites him, but he gets away, right? And then the mask guy, who is the actual therapist, is also the killer. He's called the mask. He He's called the mask? Like the Jim Carrey so character? So he wears a mask. They call him the mask. What kind of a mask is it? It's just a... It's a white face. I think it's I don't like remember. a Jason mask. No, it's not that cool. It's just like a, a hood. You mm. know. Anyway, he fr- he basically says like he basically frames this guy. The guy gets killed, but he doesn't really die because he's gotten bit by that monster, and so he becomes one of the night breed. Yeah, which is a group of like semi dead, various looking weird looking monsters. They right? do look and they weird. Have a world. It's all one of them looks like Mac tonight. He d- <laughs> actually does, <laughs> except not as cool. Uh, so anyway, that's the film. I saw this movie, and while I was scared by the bathroom ghost, the film wasn't scary at all. It was dumb, and and I thought I. Didn't so why like wouldn't it. you think I would like? It? Does it have a lot of blood in it? Oh yeah, oh, of okay. course. So it's Clive Barker. Yeah. You know. So anyway, let's. So that's your movie. So let's. Re, and it was a dog. So of course you get these movie rights at well ahead of time, and you just roll the dice. Especially when your name is freaking Ocean. Yeah, you do. Ocean takes a gamble. It's not all RoboCop's boat. Sometimes you get a, sometimes you get one of these night breeds. In every in every life, some night breed must fall. That's right. And so here comes Nightbreed, released in ninety, uh, and it was on two big discs, boat, published by Ocean. You know that. Developed by an outfit called Impact. Right. Impact had two games. Uh, aside from Nightbreed, the interactive movie, they also did uh, Nightbreed, the action movie, and they did Run the Gauntlet. I don't know what Run the Gauntlet is. I never heard of that one. It's it's that game where you're playing in the Gnome Olympics. Is no, that's not it. That's a Mystic. <laughs> that's a Mystic Marathon. <clears throat> so, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and call these boys out. They worked on this. Chris Carey the, is the coder. And uh, one of the artists, Mark Rogers, also worked on this. And the graphics were done by a guy named John Beard, his only effort on the Amiga. And another, and Steve Carey also worked on the graphics. And he was responsible for stuff I've never heard of, Deflector, Federation, Federation of Free Traders. I never heard any of this stuff. Mm. Uh, the, now, the, here's something I thought was interesting. The music in this was done by someone that actually doesn't suck. Barry Letch, among his uh, 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 titles are, of course, Lotus 2. Pretty good music in that. Your name sounds familiar. Humans, yeah. Silkworm, Supercars 2, uh, Hero Quest. He's been he's done like four million things. So something tells me Ocean was like, listen, we need to. We've got where's our great staff like like uh, a player? Get him over here. Put some music to this, and he did. So this also believe it or not got con- was converted over, and I don't know what came from where, but there was an Atari ST release and a DOS release. I was going to look at the DOS release of this to, ch- to compare them, and then I played this, and I was like, I'm done. I'm not looking at the DOS version. So, when you hear the words interactive movie, that is a, those are trouble words right <laughs> They there. are troubled words. You're like, uh-oh, <laughs> this could be trouble. Mm-hmm. So, in this interactive movie, you play the, t- the, the title character from the film. And your job... It, Aaron well, Boone is the title Aaron character. Aaron Boone, yeah. Yeah, he's also the manager of the uh, Yankees. He, he, yeah, I right believe now. he's the guy that also screwed the Yankees. Or was it, or was it, which Boone was it that, ho- that hosed the Yankees? That one? Or no, it was a Red Sox. Well, there's been like three generations yeah. of Boones in Major League So Baseball. anyway, you play Boone here. Uh, Aaron Boone, the name kills me. And so you are the, you start out in your therapist's office, all right? And, you're thinking, and, you, and you go through this rigmarole where he's convincing you that you're the killer, just like in a movie. And the graphics in this are stylized. What do you think? Stylized? 
I'm being kind here. What do you think of the graphics? I don't think the graphics are bad in this game. I think they're weird looking. The, the, well, it's I, a weird movie. Well, you got that right. So then you go to this game's number one. <laughs> this is the this is the interactive part of the interactive movie. The driving around the map sequence. This is the bane <laughs> of my existence. If you this is as interactive. I mean, I can't think of anything that it. it this is like going to one of those kiosks and hitting the next button. That's as interactive as it gets. That seems to be more exciting than this particular so, portion of the game. In the first part of this game, you're in a car and you're driving. And so I'll, the first thing I did was always drive towards the police station. It doesn't matter. You'll be driving. So there's an overhead map with a, this crazy... Whoever put these roads together must have been out of their minds. Because it's just this crazy roundabout route. It's all one big overhead map. And you click on the map to where you want your car to go to on the intersection you want to go to. And so you got to go one intersection at a time. Yeah, and these intersections are not far, or these intersections are very close together on the map. You Except for the cemetery. One. Right. And so there's always a chance that you're going to run into a roadblock. Why? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, when you okay. when you hit a roadblock, I think that there is a random chance that you could either A, puncture a tire, which slows you down, or B, puncture your fuel tank, which causes you to run out of fuel more quickly. Well, no, that's true. Or C, you just get through. But right. my point is, why are there roadblocks all over this map? Oh, it's Because just, nothing's happened yet. Right. You left your therapist. And it's part of the skill required to complete no, this game. It's garbage. It's random garbage. Now it's not totally random, but it's garbage. So once you, if you, so you like the boat said, you can either go to the roadblock unmolested, go to the roadblock and get shot in the tire, and that slows your car down. Or go to the roadblock and get shot in the gas tank. That means you're going through gas quicker. Did we mention you've got gas? You've got to, this is like me going to work or going out in the field. I gotta watch the. I gotta watch the gas tank in this game. And there's a big fuel gauge at the bottom. And so, randomly, if you know where to look at a map, there are gas stations. They're not right. marked. Now, keep in mind, there is no currency in this game. This is not part of the skill at all. You can always fill up, no matter what. Yeah. Now, I will. this is the one thing I'll give this game credit for. There's one thing. This game has cheap gas. 50 cents a gallon, that's a good deal. It's pretty good. Pretty that's, a, good. that's all it's got. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I'll, I'll also, always fill up your tank every time. Don't ever say, no, nah, I'm not going to fill it up. Don't do that. So, anyway, eventually, you either wreck your car or you get to where you're going. Okay? There's no... Or you run out of gas. If you get to where you're going, initially, you basically... They put you in an insane asylum. Okay? If you wreck your car... They put you in an insane asylum. Right. So the, the 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 best strategy of this game is actually just to drive straight to the police station because it's That's a faster trip. Yeah. yeah. And, and then they put you in there. If you also run out of gas, guess where you're going? Insane, insane asylum. Insane asylum. So and you magically get your car back after now, every time. I, so. I did a lot of experimentation with this game because I thought it can't be this dumb. So on my I changed my route after about 20 plays, and I went directly to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. All right? Skip the middleman. You can't do that, right? You can do you it. You can do You can it. go right to the cemetery, and when you get there, the game ends. Basically, well, yeah, I mean, you can, but it's... It basically, you, right. you, you you get there, and there's nothing going on. Right, so exactly. Then you have to go back, and then you have to eventually go to the insane asylum. Once you get right. to the insane asylum, a crazy... No, well, no, no, I think you're scared. You, got, you, go, you go to the... Go to the you, you go to the hospital. Right. It's that, not insane asylum. The insane asylum is later. But, well, it's not for me. I went to the cops. They checked me in the insane asylum. That's the first thing they did. And so once you, it, long story short, you have to go there mm -hmm. because a crazy guy there tells you, "Hey, have you heard about this cemetery?" Is Midian. There, it's the gateway where all your sins can right. be forgiven. So that means that. So then you have to escape the insane asylum. Well, don't worry. It just escapes for you. Over. And over again. Mm -hmm. Anytime you go to the insane asylum, the next thing that happens is you escape and you're back on that map right. in that stupid car. Everything leads to this car at the beginning of this game. And so now you're driving all the way to the cemetery. Well, of course, it's a million miles away to a million forks. You gotta go you gotta go get the gas thing, the all the crap of the roadblocks over and over. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Then you finally, maybe, you, and if you fail, you go back to the insane asylum. You start all over, okay? Then, and of course, I played this on my actual Amiga, so there's no save states in that crap. Then you finally get to the cemetery. You get a choice. You can look around in the cemetery. You can enter the, enter graveyard, the graveyard, 
and and or, or you can enter the actual city of the dead. Well, they, it's supposedly a choice. You, yeah, because if, if you try to go just right to the Sea of the Dead, you're instantly killed and the game is over. Mm-hmm. It also says, it says like, uh, uh, those creatures, like, rip you asunder. You're dead. Game well, no, over. no, what happens is if you go, if you try to go to Midian beforehand, the cops show up and the cops kill you. No, not what, for me. Okay, well, here's what to... happened to me. So you, if you don't go to the graveyard first, you try to enter Midian, and it's like you can't find it or something like that. And all of a sudden, the cops show up, and they're like, he's got a gun, and he dives down, and Let's then you see. get shot up. If you go to the graveyard first and get bit by the, by the right. Mac Tonight buddy, right. then you become immortal. So when you get shot by the cops, when you come back out, you go. You, right, you have to. But see, you're, I'm saying if you go to the graveyard after you've been in the insane asylum, and you go into Midian, you instantly get killed. Okay. And now if you go into the graveyard, then you get chased by this Rastafarian demon from the movie. Mm-hmm. He's going to bite you. And so then you play, then some more interactive movie starts up. Right. And the interacting movie of this is, this guy's chasing you, and you've got to stay ahead of him. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, you click the mouse button with his arms. Yeah. And he'll, okay. And you, it shows this like, is, I've been waiting all episode to Okay, hear go about ahead. This. Get on Get on it. No, no. I want to know, were you able to beat this section? I was. Okay. A, as evidenced by my stream, because I streamed this, yeah. I tried, like the Dickens, every strategy that I could try to get past this, and I was unable to get by it. So, Aaron, please tell me your secret. You ever played, uh, remember the swimming event in uh, Summer Games? Mm-hmm. You have to. It's a time. It's not necessarily you can't just, a speed. You can't just yeah. go like. Blah, blah, blah. You have to like time it. That's right. what this is. You have to kind of click the thing as the guy moves, as his arms move, mm-hmm. and you're clicking with his arms. And so, do you think that it was because I was using the joystick? Well, you were emulating it, so there could that could be an issue. That's I don't true. know. Uh, all I know is I got out. All right, I made it. I, and trust me, it wasn't like I did it the first time. It took me about ten tries. Mm-hmm. That got old. Another reason I hate this game, but I did get out because I knew. I remember this from before. Then you and then once you get bit, the whole bit with the cops that the, your shrink shows up with the cops and he frames you and he gets you killed and then you and then you rise from rise from your grave mm-hmm. and you then you hook up with those other idiots and, and then you're you're ready to rock and roll. Eventually, this game devolves into a very stupid game where you run around in this three dimensional cavern. I don't know if you got that far. I, I, I did not. No, because I couldn't beat that section. Yeah. I, I just watched it on the, uh, the, on the YouTube. The three-dimensional cavern is one of those, like, advances a block every time you hit forward oh, gimmicks. Oh, yeah. Just like Dungeon Master and all but these horrible But this cavern, I mean, I've never beaten this game or even come close because I always give up because I get mad. And this cavern involves you going through, like, uh, there's a scene where you have to jump, like, this piranha thing and mm-hmm. it comes at you. And it's real stupid looking. It looks like you're Hank Hill from that. <laughs> you King do of look Hill. like Hank Hill. And your guys like, and so here's think about it. Think and put yourself that you're in a you're in a, some kind of undead cavern, mm-hmm. okay? And you've got demons are all over the place, and these piranhas are coming at you. These like flying piranha things. And so would your reaction to this be like, oh god, I'm screwed, or would it just be like this? Just like I'm, I'm that's, just, just, still like, a look, looking bored. Like yeah. I'm bored, you know. There's, there's, it's just, it, this is the worst type of game. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize here. And I, I've never watched the end of this. I didn't watch the end. I didn't care. All right, I didn't care. It's, it's a dull, stupid, repetitive, lazy game based on a dull, stupid failure of a film in a series of dull, stupid games, the third of which was so dull and stupid that it couldn't be released. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's my review. I hated this. I double hated it. I didn't like the graphics. I hated the car scene. I hate the tunnels. I hate everything about well, this game except me, for the gas. Here's price. the thing. This is this is this is what was endemic, I think, with with this with not only the Amiga, but a lot of computer platformers or a lot of computer platforms, especially it seems like this happened a lot in Europe, where they they bundle a bunch of mediocre games together. And they'd say, comes with 16 games, you know? <laughs> and then you open up these 16 games, and it's 15 versions of games, the quality of Nightbreed, the interactive movie. And they were like, what did I just get here? What did I get myself into? And they wonder why they lost out to the PC and the consoles in terms of well, gaming. Well, the P- on, this went to the PC. Uh, and, but but the, I guarantee you there was no uh, IBM Aptiva pack with Nightbreed, the interactive movie in it. Well, you know, 
listen, I, a lot of places, a lot of the reviews I read of this compared this to like a CinemaWare game. Oh, yeah. Listen, and I know you're not the biggest fan of CinemaWare. But this is, but this is not, this no. can't uh, lay CinemaWare's boot for its worst effort was Very better true. than this. Very true. This is is just a, a, an abomination. Yeah. yeah. I you know It's it, ugly. Mm-hmm. It's stupid. Mm-hmm. It's ugly and stupid. Mm-hmm. It's also not fun. It punishes you for trying to have fun. Bad you. Mm-hmm. Get back to the tedium. Tedium is the name of this game. And so when you ask me what I hated worse, Severed Head or this, I hate this much worse. Because really? Severed Head knew what it was. Mm-hmm. It was like barely a, a, a game you would pay for. Yeah. But, I mean, there's some fun there, right? And, and, and amusement. This, like when I played it, I didn't get angry or frustrated or want to hurt things. This, this guy, I don't care if he's dead, alive, undead, I hate Mitty, and I hope they never, ever get their own town. <laughs> Screw them. The dead should stay dead. I don't want them romping around. I don't want some Rastafarian demon chasing me through the graveyard. I didn't like it. Thumbs down. And well, I don't usually review stuff, but thumbs way down on this one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't hate this as much as the text. Just because the text adventure was just so... I don't know. I, I feel like... Um, Everything about that text adventure was horrible. I've played a lot of great text adventures, and I like the genre. Um, but this, I feel like if I could have just gotten past that first level, I would have had more fun with it. I didn't think... You the, would have less fun. Okay. The first level, that's where they drain the life out of you. It's just like the game. If you start, if you get into the tunnels, you've become the undead. <laughs> Look at this scene right here. Did you see this part? Dies the fire fire. Look at this idiot. <laughs> Who thinks this is a game? Yeah, yeah, it is bad. Horrible. It is bad. Horrible. Yeah. Um, I uh, found reviews on this. This is where I think the people of Lemon, I love Lemon, love them. But this is one of those instances where I think they've lost their minds. They, because I read reviews where people were like, Whoa, I love this game. It was great. But no, 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 not great. This got a 6.45 score on Lemon. A- atrocious. Half that. This is not a six. This yeah. is a three. I, I challenge you to find any games on Lemon that are below that, though. Oh, there are. Top banana. Um, Amiga Action gave this a 74. Too high. This is an F game. Uh, AUI, our good buddies down in Australia, they had a little more common sense. They gave this the big 5 0. Fitty. They dropped a the Fitty on this That's thing. That's a fair score. And the one gave this a 75. Wrong. Wrong. This should have been a hammer. Should have been dropped. This should never be bought or sold. Uh, however, if you want to buy or sell it, <clears throat> there is a couple copies on eBay. Believe it or not, someone had the audacity, the awe, to ask ninety-two bucks or best offer on this. My best offer, burn. There's also one for twenty-five, forty-three. I saw one that had sold recently for five bucks. And if you want the discs to give a Mexican burial, jump on. Four bucks, you get the disc. What's a Mexican burial? That's when you get around a sucker and you just put the boots to him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is that a, is that a wrestling term? I don't think so. Gang term, I think. Gang term. So what do you got? Did anyone in the uh, Discord have the guts? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This better be a <clears throat> beat down. So Chris Fold says this game puts the M in mediocre. There is not a single redeeming factor, and playing it is more of an insult to your senses than a movie-based adventure. Mm. I would rather play Top Banana. Uh -mm. Three out of ten. I agree with that. And Graham Vebke says, I'm not a fan of the movie, and I'm not a fan of this game either. Or the arcade-style game, also made by Ocean, milking the missed movie license for everything. It looks okay, but it's very illogical for a point-and-click adventure, and it gives the impression of a rushed idea, a rush and idea-starved game. Look me in the, lock me in the asylum if I suggest playing this again. It scores one more point for the graphics over Severed Heads, 2 out of 10. Very good. You know, keep this in mind as we close the door on this god-awful thing. Ocean, its bread and butter was to try to get these licenses and do something with them. This, and I read that this movie, had there was a lot of hype behind it. Ocean thought so much of this. They were willing to throw down three separate games. All right, like even like Batman didn't get three games at once. Like all the biggest licenses never got three well, it's, games. It's the power of CB. It's the power of CRAP. <laughs> Crap. Can you imagine? Now keep in mind, you got the action game. All right, and we're going to look at that if we have it. I don't think we ever did. You've got this abomination. 
The next one was going to be Nightbreed, the RPG. Strap that on. Think about that. You're going to be playing an RPG in this world? Man, I hope you like the interior of a car. Yeah, yeah. Horrible. It's very true. Boo! Boo! (laughs) All right, Aaron. Well, before we go, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank... Pixels at Dawn for being the uh, the latest donation here uh, for Send Boat Back to Amiga Ireland, uh, the fundraiser. Every for- time you say that, I just like, you just stop right there. Just send him back. It doesn't matter where he goes. <laughs> if you are interested in getting a front row seat in Amiga Ireland from wherever you are in the world, uh, please consider donating to my uh, GoFundMe page. I plan on live streaming all of the events, uh, interviews with all the top execs, and, uh, and just, you know, just really just getting everybody a flavor of what it is it may not be the largest attended uh amiga event in the world but it's got the most heart and uh and it's 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 really uh it's really a great event and um i am halfway to my goal uh, and uh so if you want to pop on uh, gofundme.com slash f slash send boat back to amiga ireland with hyphens between the words uh it would be fantastic wow. To have your donation. They what's, really make it easy to find. What's the right? F stand for? Uh, it's saying, you know what it stands oh, for. Oh, wow. <laughs> you got to go so, there, are you? Thank you, Pixels at Dawn, for your donation. All right, Aaron. Last week, actually, before we do the supporter song, we did get a little bit of feedback. This comes from Andy Smith. Okay? All right. We got quite a few Andys in the Amigos community. He says, hi, John and Aaron. I just want to say that I've really been enjoying catching up on the Amigos podcast. I'm a bit late to the game, but heard Lorfarius mention you enough times that I finally had to check you out, and you are perfectly filling the Amiga-shaped hole left by Amigurama's desi- demise. What? <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> I've checked out several of your episodes now and just finished the cannon fodder one, which I loved. You touched on the controversy surrounding uh, caused by the game's use of the poppy and thought you might like to check out an episode of a podcast series I did called Outrage, Outrage, Outrage! I already love that. Which looked back at various controversies in media. Sounds like a pretty good topic. That sounds right up my alley. I I get outraged all the time. I covered cannon fodder in detail the first episode along with John Hare. This episode's called Video Game Horror Fodder. And so if you are interested in that story, I I recommend uh, checking out the podcast Outrage, outrage, outrage. So he's saying he actually hooked up with John Hare for that episode? It says along with John Sweet Hare. Sweet lordy. I gotta, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. So uh, Outrage, outrage, outrage. Man. And he says, How I, am I not involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, Andy, for, for, that, uh, for that message. And feel free to send us an email anytime at feedback at amigospodcast.com. We'd love to hear from mm. you. All right, Aaron. Last week, the supporter song was... I can't believe you didn't know this. I had no idea. You know, Aaron, there are cars and then there are classics, as Mr. T once said. Last week's song... Mr. T said that? Yeah. I didn't think he said anything, but I paid a fool. Oh, I'll show you after the show. Um, last week's song was the Tammy Wynette standard, Stand By Your Man. That was that? Yeah. My God. She's spinning around her grave after that performance. I think she's still with us. No. Is she not? I know. Tammy mm. Wynette died a long time ago. Mm. Uh, well, I want to thank and congratulate all of our reviews because not all people share your lack of knowledge about America's musical history. Terry Howard, Pack Billy, Pixels at Dawn, Boss Man, Paul Harrington, and Christian Anderson. Christian uh, writes in, If I'm not mistaken, the song is Stand By Your Man by Tammy Wynette, even if I think I know it from the Blues Brothers. Thanks for a very entertaining podcast oh, yes. on my favorite topic. Christian C A Z Gibskov, A K Zorglub from Denmark. What was all that? That was his. That was his it's sign. His full title. Yeah, his full title. You know how when you Zorblox have Zorblock, they've in got there? royalty over there, and names are longer because everybody's got Is a title. Zorblock a name? That's like a duke or an earl in Denmark. You've got to be a Zorblock. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 just as common as the you know the Duke of Marlboro over there, the Zorblock. There's a Duke of Marlboro. Yeah, is he a three pack a day guy? Hey man, he's not with us anymore. He took it's the same fate as every Marlboro man. Oh man, I think I'm a bummer. So this week, um, if you know this week's Patreon and supporter song, and if you do like the show, please uh, head on over to Patreon.com/slash Amigos Podcast if you'd like to throw us a couple bucks. Uh, you can send us an email at john at amigospodcast.com 
And if you know the song, it goes a little something like this. <clears throat> Yorga Van Gun that Sun Terry Howard Reflection Simon Ledge Captain Crispy Kilobytes and Caffeine Mike W Decker Three Wood Gary Head the Free Lunch Kid Fox David Pickford Cameron Armstrong Andy Jones, Lobsterminator, Craig McClellan, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, Counting Virtual Sheep, Bernard Quinn, Retro Man, Cape Dim, Drew, Savin Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Adder, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nims, Matthew Larimore, Andy Craig, Sean Zoa. Darren Low, Max Call, and 419, Bachby Rodenberg, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, John Cook, Leaf Galan, Alec Bob, Chicote, Level John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creepy Dead Boy, Figgy CTZ, The Slow Norris, Stefan Sorgan Martinson, Evan Helen, Blindo 75, Christopher Saul, a rabbit, Abbott, Chris, Full Green Catcher, Lauren Jeru, Graham Bebke, Elaine Dinson, Adam Batters, B, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, C, Ryan Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles. Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rue, Lil THC, Eric Nelson, Tim, Tommy Humberstadt, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Bear, Kuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixels at Dawn, and Kill Bjorn Barman. Which kind of makes me want to, you know, just a... Horrible. Hideous. An affront to the real artist. Next week, Aaron, we will be playing Batman. You're the kidding movie. me. Well, there you go. I just mentioned it. Listen, how many of these Halloween episodes you said we did? This Five. is like the fifth one. Mm -hmm. These get more wretched every year. They do. They these do. are. I don't absolutely know why. Dreadful. I don't know why horror films are. Uh, why the, why they why developers have such a hard time making good horror? It's like it's that's a genre made for video games. You would think. You would think. I mean, I think they perfected it after this batch of games. There's got to be. I'm begging you. There's got to be something out there. It's Nightbreed. I mean, this was war. This was horrible. Now, uh, this is like studying for your finals. I, mean, I just, I just drudged this. I just, I just put my head down. I get so, got so, take a bourbon and just like let's go. I knew because I was like, oh man, this is gonna be a painful one. I it do want to thank uh, the fo the fine folks over on the Twitch chat. We do record this show every week live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Want to thank Pixels at Dawn for moderating and being overall awesome. Edvin Helen, Brother Bill. And especially thank you to Brother Bill for gifting uh, for gifting some subs over on Twitch. Picard 2010, Paul Kitching, Barkbit, uh, what? Rouse, Rousey MSX, Pack Billy. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, from all over the globe, all from four all quarters, over the globe, Germany, Australia, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. England, you got Canada everywhere. It's a, it's amazing. It's it amazing. Is. It is. Auto watch night breed boat. Working on those night breeds. No. <laughs> what does that mean? Autumn closing in. Oh shit! You're <laughs> killing me. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Until then. Adios. Adios. <laughs> you're an, oh, you're an idiot. Right. <laughs> you could have won anyway. Oh no! It's it's. I'm gonna go up and. I gotta pour some more cracking. I'm gonna put on my Sinclair shirt. Yeah. And I'm gonna pee. All Those right. games are horrible, but they horrible. Were. We'll be Come back, on. guys. Horrible. We'll be right back. Horrible. Horrible.
Sure. Sitting in your chair, I was taking over the show. You're taking over. Can you believe people are kind enough to watch Look, this show? Like, just taking you're over. You're streaming right now. You're yeah, over here. I don't care. Hey, hey, hey everybody. Peace. It's Leroy. Idea. This is a much better show over. now okay. that I'm here. Same exact setup. So this time, instead of a video guy, I get to use that thing, and I do all the. You talk while I actually. That's right. That's just the ghost that haunts the Amigo the Studio. I thought about doing that literally all year. Yeah. Here's the thing. Yeah. You know how painful it is to hold the puppet <laughs> right. for the amount of time. That Finally, you'll get some real it. content. If you can do it, I can do it any time. Let me tell you about a great game. Do it. Okay. One that won tons and tons of awards. What do you think? Not for the Amigo. For the PC. You look great. Gabriel man. Knight, The Beast awesome. Within. Play that. We covered that. All we six. covered it. We covered what? it. That's a fantastic game. We covered that. They wrote game. a stinking orchestra. Hit the bricks. Are you coming back over here for this? Peace what? For that no. Shit, that game. You're that kidding me. You're going to frog it. This is spectacular. Wagner's Unfinished Symphony. Which, how, which of these shirts are mine? All of them. Maybe I should come back. Do you think it, we You think we should leave the frog with the Amigos? Is this mine too? The black one's yours. You. What's that? Do you think you're I should the, Hey, you're the man, buddy. I'm just I'm just, I'm just the other guy. Schmo McSchmo. No, people know your name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. Schmo McSchmo. Mick 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 a honey ho. Mick a honey ho. Mick a honey ho. But I hope you're the game, my friend, because I have very little to say about it and very little about it. Hold on. I try to. Hey, Bring up a new character. That's not a bad idea, but I'd have to set it all up again. It would take forever. Don't worry about it, man. What is this? Are you screaming for me to come back? Hell no! They're like, who's that? Who's that vagrant? <laughs> Somebody said it was the ghost at Haunts the Amigo Studio. I was like, absolutely. Hey, Rushi, the third one did happen, dude. There was a third one. It was, and the yeah. second one was the best one, by the way. The third one was about vampires. No, 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 it wasn't. The third uh, Gabriel Knight. Yeah, it was about vampires. No, it wasn't. It was about the the um, the Rosicrucians and the whole uh, Rizla Le Chateau mystery. Uh, but I mean, it was vampires. No, it, wasn't. it was vampires. Well, it was. It wasn't really vampires. I've got your copy. I know what it's about. Well, well, I don't second one. You still got my copy of Gabriel Knight, the third game. I, I keep everything, dude. Was it about vampires? I don't remember. I remember about being the Rizla Chateau district over in the Languedoc area of France. We love you, Paul. Pixel just dropped in a review. All right. I will. That's the advantage. Best thing I ever did was stopping printing out the reviews and reading them off the Discord. Need the mic back up. <laughs> but you're going to be the man here. I'm ready to talk about any subject. Except for the game. For, no, I, I can talk about the game. Just, I, it was, it, I had trouble. It's just like last week. 
You've just had an issue with Spectrum games lately. What was last week? Deactivators. No, I played that. I played both of them. I played this too. I just, I had, but listen, you're right, maybe more stick. I need a real spectrum. That's the problem. No, you need to start using a joystick and not using the keys. And you need a real emulator. I've got two emulators. The, yeah, both I'm of sure. them are no, crap. I have, no, one There's of only good. one that's good. Slip. You don't know. You're out of the loop. Mr. I've got a real spectrum. You wanna you wanna um pimp the uh thing there? Can you be more specific? The, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I mean, I look to the left. I'm flattered, but look to the left of the spectrum. Do you see that device? This? Yes. No. Well, that's that's a that's a promotional eraser. This? Yes. What what is this? <laughs> that's the uh, future was eight bit. They're the official oh, it sponsors. Came in. Yeah. Of you the, didn't even of tell Arson me. Claire. Yeah. Oh my God, but. Oh. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. I'll need you to model it because I have oh, no listen. opposable limbs. I'll just go. I can only uh, do this. I'll just lick it. I can do that too. You know what this is? Do one of these. Oh, what good this. are you? Gene Simmons. Oh, God. Yeah. You going to talk about that concert you watched again? Hey! <laughs> do you guys like to drink beer? I heard, I heard Hurricane West Virginia likes to rock. <laughs> Man. We do. I we do, to, Boat. I need to fire that up on Computer Club tomorrow. No. Now my eyes are closed inexplicably. That, it's pretty funny to watch you just... I mean, it, that's the way a lizard looks. It is. All right, you ready? Hamina, 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 ham, ham, ring, yeah. All right, here we go. Hi, right, everybody. Welcome to... Nope. You're not welcome. Get out. All right, we're gonna run the. We're gonna. What mix, happened? We're gonna mix it in. I'm doing it your way now. I always forget. You know what that means, right? I don't know what that means. What you're that gonna, means? You're gonna do the opening. Is that yeah? Okay. So silence, and then. If you enjoy our Sinclair and want to support the show, please visit our page at Patreon.com/slash Our Sinclair. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Tisha. I mean, Aaron. <laughs> and today, for our first annual Halloween Spooktacular, we're going to be talking about Yumiko and the Haunted Mansion. Aaron, tell me about your experience with haunted houses. Have you ever been inside a building that was supposed to be haunted? Many, many times, but Really? Absolutely. Mm. Now, uh, out of all of those... How many of them were? did you leave convinced that they were actually haunted? Hmm, good question, Boatster. Now, I'm talking non-residential places. Uh, I would say, you know, I'm not, I think none. But, convinced they were haunted, no. But, did I have a spooky thing happen, or was it eerie, or did I feel like an unworldly presence? A couple times. Uh, the times that come to mind, one of the places I was at was the very famous Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum here in West by here God. Here in West by God, and we went the whole. We were there for the whole. You get the tour, you go all night, you know. And uh, we, me and Tree, were there, and we went the whole night. It was cold, and it was you know, it's a big, weird, empty building. It's old from civil pre Civil War. The last part of the night, we were in a area that was devoted to ch children that had violent uh, mental problems. They locked kids up in this place. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, this is, keep in mind, pre-Civil War. Yeah. They could, you could lock up your wife just because the husband said she's nuts. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. That's, and, 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 you, and that's all it took. And they're like, okay, we believe you. We know, you know, we know how it works. So this place was super violent. And there'd been a super duper violent crime that happened in here where a guy got killed in a very really uncool way. That place was, I will say, this, the vibe was creepy. Now, it was late, we were tired, and we were cold. But it was creepy. Now, I was at the uh, Whiffle General Store, the uh, company store, uh, and that we asked a question. And This and, is an old coal town. In that's West right. Virginia, well, it's right? now it's an, an old nothing, but this right. is a general store. from a, It was a coal store from back in the day. Was this, people would work at a coal mine in West Virginia, and I'm sure it was like this in other places. And you worked for company script. And so you would take your company script and you'd go to the company store. You, you would buy your soul your, to the company store. That's right. And you would go in there and you would buy stuff. Now, this place had allegedly had like hundreds of hundreds of murders mm -hmm. and rapes and stuff. It was brutal, violence place. that Crap went down. Right. 
And uh, we were in a, of all places, this large like storage closet. And we were asking questions. And uh, we were saying, but it's one of those demons, if, you, if you're here and you can hear us, you're gonna make a noise. And the second we said that, we heard a noise out of the blue. Creepy, you know, what does it mean? Who knows, it's just, you know, it could be crap. But that was a pretty creepy place. Then we went to a place called the Anchorage in, uh, uh, it was in uh, Marietta, Ohio, I believe is where it was at. And that was another creepy place. We had free reign, including the basement and the cellar. And it was a super creepy place. And I know some people on Tree's team had some weird experiences. And it was, it was a, you got a weird vibe. So I've been some places where you got kind of a weird vibe. And in graveyards, uh, me, and, me and my boy Leroy were at a couple graveyards where we got a weird vibe. You know, so of course he's a major league coward, and the second he anything, the second you hear any sort of noise or uh, it got a remotely cold or a, or a, a frog jumped somewhere, he was it was like Shaggy from Scooby running like a like a baby heading to the car crying like a, like a baby. Now this is the first episode of the uh, Our Sinclair Spooktacular. That's right, and I cannot let it go to pass without a retelling of the classic. Daveroni's Haunted Hag Cemetery. Well, I'm not sure this is a haunted story as opposed to some sort of drug-addled story. I used to work at a pizza place in West Virginia in Hurricane named Daveroni's. And the back door of this place, I'd leave it open when I was doing dishes back there. And the, uh, uh, the back door was right beside the train tracks. And I was back there working one night and a train went by. And as the train went by, I got sick. And I said, listen, i got to go home. I'm feeling really ill. And so instead of going home, I left. I got in my car. I felt a little better. I drove to my buddy's house. And I was there for a while. And on my way back, I saw a withered, decayed hag, skeleton hag, shambling up the side of the road for the standard food right there at the cemetery. And it really freaked me out. And I've always wondered if it was there was something on that train that, like, screwed with my mind. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like, uh, sort of like, you remember how, like, Daredevil formed when they dump toxic waste on him, something mm -hmm. like that. You never know. Those 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 train cars coming in from Montgomery. <laughs> you never know what's on those suckers. Yeah. What about you? You had any weird spook? Because you're not what I would call a uh, paranormal type. But the scariest thing I've ever heard is I used to have this Flintstones record when I was a kid, and they went to a, a haunted, a spook, they didn't call it a haunted house, it was a spooky house. Uh -huh. And I tell you, there were some sound effects, some door closing noises. I'd have to shut the thing off. I'd have to turn on the lights, shut the thing off, and start and just just start watching some Care Bears because I had a hard time with that record. So was, even at uh, birth, you were sort of the puss type. Yes. You know, yes. I will say I'm going to defend you here, Boat, because that's so you've never had a ghost feeling or anything spooky. Oh, I. You know, whenever I watch anything even remotely related to the paranormal, uh -huh. I get I get all tingly when I, especially when I'm home alone. But I mean, know? have you ever experienced anything like not TV related or record related? <sighs> I don't think I've ever had a real life experience with the paranormal. Have you crept to a graveyard at night, anything like that? Went to a spooky house? We used to play hide and seek in Boy Scouts in the graveyard behind the Baptist Church. Up anything there. weird ever happened? No. No? No. You know, getting back to your record, when I was a kid, I had this thing from Disney. It was thrilling, chilling sounds of the haunted house. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an, a, it's an orange box, you know, orange, uh, you know, container with a big, cool animated haunted house on it. It's not animated, it's from an animation. Mm -hmm. And I used to listen to this thing. I had it was just all it was was sound effects from a haunted house. It used oh, yeah. to freak me out. And we still actually have the album. It's it at, is, yeah. It's at the house, and that's a pretty famous album. Uh, if I was going to collect, um, you know, I, I really, if I was going to start a new collection, I'd love to have records like those. Especially sometimes they'd come with Viewmaster slides. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be. I, I'd love to have an old like '60s or '70s haunted mansion Viewmaster slide set with the Viewmaster projector and play that thing. I mean, I wouldn't do it after dark. I have mean. you? So you've never taken like a candlelight tour of any place, or any, like, or any like after dark tour? Oh, jeez, no. What is it? Is it just you don't? So basically, you just don't put yourself in a position to be scared. Yeah, you got to avoid avoid the occasion of horror. Mm -hmm. We've been on. Uh, in fact, we just took a, uh, a haunted tour of St. Albans. Really? Does St. Albans have some haunted spots? It does. It does, and uh, and some and some real nice historical stuff. And, uh, uh, and the scariest thing is that after we left, there, were, there was an arson and a murder. So, 
<laughs> that's not good. Yeah, that's the problem. I don't think that's hauntings. I don't think that's the paranormal. So you've never had that's like you never hauntings. lit a match or or, or a, a candle and walked to a cemetery, or walked like we've done candlelight tours of like uh, uh, parts of the asylum. Or you know another place we did was a very scary place to go was Moundsville Penitentiary. You've been there. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get Did you go down in the cellar or anything, the powerhouse or anything? Like that? Oh no! I mean, my wife and I went there on our honeymoon. Actually, uh, this is the thing in Weston, right? <laughs> Yeah. No, that's the... Is it is it in Weston? No, no Weston is where the Terrence Allegheny's yeah. at. Yeah. That's where we went on our honeymoon. Mount we just Ville recently went to the Mount... And I was surprised. That place, it housed prisoners until like the early 90s, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's now it's completely uh, destroyed, mauled. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that we've been through there. And it, there are some places that do like a... Can that's why this you game know, sort of <laughs> reminded me of that because you get the candlelight tour, basically. I, I will say this. When I was in school, you know, I went to Ohio University. Uh, by many accounts, Ohio University is the most haunted college campus in America. And I did listen to people that told me stories of going to the lunatic asylum on campus there. Yeah. I never went myself, but even the stories, it was too much. I had to leave. Have you ever have you ever played with a Ouija board? No. Have you ever even okay? Let's let's simplify it. How about a tarot card? Did you ever play with tarot cards? No. A dowsing rod. <laughs> Anything like that? There was a movie from the seventies. It was a Disney movie, but yeah. it was a live action movie when they were into that deal. It was called Watcher in the Woods. Uh, ooh. Have you heard of this movie I've before? I've heard of it. I've never seen it. Mega scary. I watched it in fifth grade. They put it on for us at Halloween. I didn't sleep for a week. Really? So you're very sensitive to this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't like being scared. It's not fun for me. I so, like being not scared. So I guess the next question is, did the game this week scare you? Uh, it's funny. You, I enjoyed this game. Well, let's not get too far. I like games that are... Here's my perfect level of horror. Uh -huh. Let me put it like this. The Haunted Mansion at Disney World, uh -huh. where it's like creepy, but in like a smile. It's like a friendly creepy. So sort of like my son. Yeah. A wimpy creepy. I'm just like Luke. Yeah. I like things that are like, ooh, it's creepy, but it's also kind of a little funny, you know? Um, Luigi's Mansion, one of my favorite games of all time. Although there were some parts of that that made me a little afraid. You know, I've got a sidetrack for a minute because I see Curtis just said something in chat. Dr. Tongue's 3D House of Beef. Now that is an obscure reference. And I want to acknowledge how obscure it is because I'm a big SCTV fan. And you, we all have watched these after dark, late night horror, local horror shows, chiller theaters. Is this like stuff. Elvira? Yeah, something like that, but lower end. And so SCTV, which is a made up TV network that's part of a comedy show, they had Dr. Tongue. Dr. Tongue and Bruno. And Dr. Tongue was played by John Candy. And he would, and they would have these 3D movies and he'd be like, you know, he'd be like, will you sign this document? And he'd go, Mary, 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 into the camera like that. It's so funny. And But also they had a guy named uh, Count Floyd. Count Floyd also, was, he would host the shows that Dr. Tongue was on. And he was a vampire. And he was, and it was a Joe Flaherty. Is this played. where like the MST3K, like TV's Frank and all that stuff, is that like an homage to all it's these not, guys? It's not. There's no homage to these guys. But it was super funny. So it, for just as a Halloween, of course we're getting late in the game for Halloween. But if you want to see something funny, it's just, one day after Halloween. Just look up. It's just not late. In the look game. up Doctor Tongue on on YouTube and, and 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 or Count Floyd and for some Halloween. This is your kind of uh, Halloween fun. It's okay. funny. It's not the least bit scary. I like it. I like it a so, lot. So and thumbs up to Curtis and, and also Pack Buddy for knowing what the heck we're talking about. Let's talk about this week's game, Aaron. Yumiko in the haunted mansion. You meek me in the haunted mansion. I'll be down the stairs. No. I like it. It was a stretch, wasn't it? I liked it a lot. No, I'm talking about my wacky pun. I am too. My, oh, okay, great. Well, then good. So, uh, you know, uh, this is a late entry on the on the, on the the spec. This may be, it's definitely one of the newest games we've I'm saying, is this newer than... Uh, this is uh, not newer than Morty Vicker. Yeah. I never came. I always want to say fresh in your drink, Govna. Every time that's what comes to my head. <laughs> more tea. It wasn't called More Tea Vicker, was it? It was called. It was uh, called More Tea Vicker. I thought that's it was. What it's I, thought called. It, I thought there was. It more wasn't to called it. fresh in your drink, Govna. <laughs> so anyway, this was released, Boatster, two thousand and twelve, just a few short years ago. Well, seven years ago. Author. Now I'm going to try to put this down. Did you look at the fella name here? No. This this is a heck of a name, Lezek Chmielowski Daniel. 
and another fellow, I think a secondary partner in this name, yours me. Okay. So, <laughs> I sure tried. That those, are, those are accurate. We do the best we can. Well, here I mean, with the listen, names. this is this is a double word score in Scrabble is, yeah. right here. Okay. Uh, of course, this was now you can play this. You got your forty eight k, or you could go big, the one twenty eight. You go double. big or you go home with this game. Yeah. And then this had a uh, this had the as a game from 2012 showed it had the full slate of control options uh, on this thing. You got you got the whole deal. Now it says here, and, and maybe you can explain what this means, Bo, because here I am a neophyte in the realm of R. Sinclair, as you know. Uh, this requires TR DOS operating system. Uh, I don't know what TR DOS is. No. So, I mean, and I and I, did, I will admit I did have some emulation issues. I got this running, but it wasn't. The easiest thing I've ever done. I did not use any sort of craziness at all. I loaded this up in Spectaculator and it worked right away. Okay, well there you go. So of course Spectaculator, a fine emulator. Right. I'm using some more of the good cut rate stuff. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I did eventually go with the joystick on this one, so you should be happy about that. So um, you are uh, Yumiko, the anime girl. Mm -hmm. Right now. Any, I don't know anything about Yumiko. Do you have any any thoughts on Yumiko? Is, is that a reoccurring character? Is she from something? I believe that she is. I believe that this is based on an anime. Okay. Or a manga. Really? A pre-existing property, if there you was, will. Because there was scarce little information on what this thing was. So, this is actually, I have to say, um, this is a pretty clever game. And it certainly has a clever look, doesn't it, Boat? It does. Uh, so, you are uh, Yukimo. It's Yukimo, isn't it? No, it's Yumiko. It says here U Y U K I M O. That's that, incorrect. You you copied and pasted incorrectly. <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at the you uh, you, you, you oh, yeah you're right I, I misspelled that you Miko I got it. So you have to light candles in this haunted mansion. Pretty simple, mm -hmm. except it's not that simple. It's not that. It's never that simple. So now I, I got two separate numbers. So are there 32 levels or 36 levels in this thing, boat? It's a I lot. I think it's 36. I think so too. So. You wander around in the dark, all right? Stop me when I'm wrong. And you go around lighting candles. Well, you can't just go light the candles. You've actually got to uh, you've got you've got to have your materials to light the candles after after your spell. And you've got a sort of uh, overarching map that helps you get around this dark because it's dark. It's pitch black. Mm -hmm. The only thing you've got to light your way is a, your own personal candle. Right. And you go around and you light the candles. That's that's all you got to do. That's the goal. Light all the candles on the level. The level ends. But there's a hitch, and the hitch is there's a there's ghosts in this uh, haunted. Well, there would be in a haunted mansion, I guess. And the ghosts uh, will go around occasionally if you're too slow, and they will blow out your they will blow out the candles. You got to mm -hmm. go do them again. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much the long and short of it. As from, as that's I will, it. That's I will the say. Game. So let's talk about the the way the game looks. Uh, this was a very clever. Whoever designed this was a smart person because they looked at the strengths of the spectrum, and and they actually used some of its weaknesses to the game's strength, mm -hmm. like your color clash, for example. There's this sort of uh, multicolored halo that surrounds uh, Yumiko as she walks through the the mansion. And it, the color clash actually makes it, it works because it sort of, it makes it feel like that she's walking around and, and lights reflect, reflecting and refracting in different ways and it works, it looks good. Uh, when you light the candles, it lights whatever's around the candle in the same sort of halo. Uh, there are occasional lightning strikes in the game and when lightning strikes, it sort of lights up the whole screen It's sort of a blue hue, mm -hmm. right? And it's good, but it's also kind of creepy when that happens because you get a look occasionally at a ghost that you can't otherwise not see, and they'll be—they just sort of are there, you know. Uh, they don't actually—they never. I mean, I played this through probably. Oh gosh, I'm trying to figure out how many levels. Like, how far did you get into this thing? I made it to level five. Okay, I didn't get that far. I think I got to level. I think I got to four uh, before I just. The, here's the thing about this game. It. It's the it's rinse and repeat basically. When you say yes, I mean, tell us about your experiences with this because you had uh, okay, obviously well, had a lot all, easier time, time getting it going. You know, with games, we're talking about the ZX Spectrum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I fairly or unfairly, I'm willing to cut the complexity of this game some slack. Yeah, 
I think that this game is a work of art, the way that they use the palette, the way that the character, first of all, the character is very, for being a small-ish sprite, I know that there's no hardware sprites on the spec here or whatever, but anyway, I'm gonna use that terminology. Uh, it, you know, she's very well animated. Uh, very, she, I mean, not very well animated. She's very well drawn. She's, she's already yeah. animated. Um, but the way, like you said, that the halos that you're describing, the, almost the word halo doesn't do it justice, but the, the way that light emanates from your character is very, very con convincing given the limited uh, palette of the spectrum. Uh, that is, the lighting effects are this game. If it wasn't for that, this game would not be worth talking about. But it is because these lighting effects are so good. Um, it really gives you the feeling of being surrounded by pitch black in a way that a game like Haunted House for the Atari does not. Of course, Haunted oh, yeah. House for the Atari 2600, perhaps the least scary game of all time. Um, so, uh, in this game, you, like you said, you go around and you light candles and you have to do it quicker than the ghosts can blow them out. Yeah, you and light all, your time. Yeah, when you light all the candles on a floor, then you're, you're done. Um, here is the problem that I had with this game. Um, I was... I was not able to die. Um, if you run into the ghost. Yeah, I was not able to run into the ghost. I never once died when playing this game. Um, it, I never died. Yeah. In, in a game where it's you, not hard. <laughs> in, in, in a game where you can't die when the threat of death is not there, and you're constantly just running around the level, relighting candles. The the fun quickly passes that yeah. um, I guess I made it to level seven level seven is where I tapped out uh, because I'm looking at this now now here's the thing another thing that I forgot to mention and I, I uh, thank uh, Spence over in the chat for pointing this out did you play the 128k or did you play the 48 I played the 48 okay the 128k version has some rockin AY music in it oh yeah yeah now AY is the the 128k sound chip uh, you know it's the SID of the uh, of the specy, and it's got some great music, and that music plays all the way through the game. Amiga developers take note. Uh, <laughs> it is it is super super awesome, and that definitely it's it's perfectly suited to the game, and it definitely kept me playing longer than even I might have without. Um, this game is you've got matches like when you press the button, you've got a certain amount of matches that you have, but I couldn't like as I never ran out of matches. Yeah. Instead, I had two matches. I always had two matches. The problem that I had was the ghost kept blowing out the candles. I kept having to go back and relight the candles. What this game boils down to is you have to find an optimal route for every level to light these candles so you can get them all lit before the ghost starts blowing yep. them out. Um, I really wanted to love... When I started playing this game, I was like, man, this is great. This is so good. Yeah. And unfortunately, my enthusiasm ebbed as I made my way through the game. And then after I stopped playing the game as I was watching playthroughs, and I realized that there is no, like this level, level seven by itself, on the playthrough, it takes him like five minutes to beat because the ghost keeps blowing out the candles and you gotta keep go, you know, relighting the candles. It's a shame that you don't have any kind of offensive weapon or any way to deal with the ghosts. The ghosts sort of appear randomly, from what I can tell. Um, it's like you said, it's it's a one trick pony, and I feel like this game is so close to really being a masterpiece. Something that I'd I'd, I'd recommend to anybody into the spectrum at all. Um, it's just missing one more thing. If they would just put in one more thing, I feel like it would have taken it over the edge. Well. I, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad, because I was nervous about this, because I thought, man, I'm, like I said, I had some trouble getting this thing cooking, and when I did kick it cooking, it just, I'm kind of like you, I'm like, I was reading, like, what this game had, and what you needed, but I'm like, I never, I, same thing, I never ran out of matches, and, and again, I could get off the levels, it, this game has a weird learning curve, because really, it's not hard, you're, you're, and like I said, if you don't run in the ghost, which I never did, uh, you're gold. And, and and the thing is, when the lightning comes and there's that cool effect and you see the ghost, it's kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, ghost. I think yeah. that's kind of neat. Yeah. And at first I was afraid. Like, I thought the ghost was was coming for me, right. you know? But that's not what the ghost does. And you're right. It's it, it's all about your optimum route. And it's one of those games, and I've read some people mention this. Like, once you understand the pattern, 
you're good to go, like Pac-Man. You can mm -hmm. go through it. Um, there's a lot here that I like graphically. I like the concept of it too, but it just it doesn't seem like enough to do. I know on later levels, uh, uh, you know, you get more into the keys and doors and stuff like that, and you have. Uh, uh, I'm assuming it gets a little more challenging, but I'm. I mean. I would play. I played this thing three or four different times this week, and I would. It just it got boring. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty quick. And that was my biggest problem with it. Just I just got bored. I mean, like you said, it, and it also can be frustrating to have to go back. There's a noise that it makes whenever the ghost blows out your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what it sounds like on the 128, but it's just, just this noise. Yeah, you know, and you, and you and you here we go. And, and the thing is, it doesn't really engender anything, but just like, oh my gosh, you know, I've got to go back and get this again. It's, it's not, the noise of tedium. Yeah, it's the noise of tedium. You know? I love it. And I'm thinking to myself when you when I was playing, it's like, listen, this engine is gold. You could make and what you could do if I was going to use this engine for something would be a, a neat dungeon exploration game where it, the map unfurled in front of you and then you could use that overworld map after to only show the stuff you'd seen yeah and you'd have yeah. something you'd be on to something here um from what i read um this was written in in compiled basic right right very impressive you know it's also got a uh, console-style password system, which mm -hmm. is welcome. And I like the fact that the passwords are not 600 characters long <laughs> right. and needlessly long. You know, some of the levels are pretty big, you know. Um, but to me, you've got some of a game, but not enough of a game. It mm -hmm. just, I just, it just, I got bored. Yeah. Like, to be, I, like I said, and, and the, I like the halo effect. The fact that you can see the bricks of the wall and you can barely see them, it's shadowy. It uses the spectrum in a, in a very cunning way. Again, that's what I liked about it. I would have liked to, if, if you were to make a game that's a horror game, I would have made it a little more horrific, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. You've got that cool lightning effect. Right. Man, once you see a ghost, and maybe have the ghosts come within your halo and they're coming after you. Yeah, that's you what have, I'm talking about. And you have about. to lose them in the maze. And that You've might got a, you know, a key component of any game in my, in my humble opinion is the fear of death, is the fear of, of losing a life. And in this game, you don't have that fear. You know, ghosts are, sp I mean, these ghosts are, are sort of Casper-like. They don't look too menacing. But you've got to have some, you've got to have something to be afraid of other than all the lights going out. Because guess what? When you start a level, all the lights are out. Yeah. So, eh. It, like I said, it, for me, it, I, I was, it, it was almost, almost tech demo. I hate to use that, but it, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, there was uh, only the World Spectrum score on this. They gave the people over at World Spectrum gave this a seven point four seven. Uh, obviously, uh, you won't be getting this on eBay, <laughs> so no reason to look that up. I'm not honestly. I don't know how this is distributed. Boat is it still? Is it something you can? Still I buy? think I believe that they made a boxed copy, a uh, limited release oh, wow. box copy. Yeah. And uh, but this is freely distributed. The standard edition is is freely distributed on on the internet. Just search it out on uh, World of Spectrum is where I got it. All right. Uh, we did have. A uh, a one review coming in from the one and only mod master pixels at dawn. He says, with fantastic AY music and graphics that make me think Pixel Vixen found an eight bit version of D Paint. <laughs> this is a solid arcade game that definitely feels like it benefits from the years of experience of specy coding since the eighties. Unfortunately, it's a little too easy but it has pure arcade action as you run from candle to candle trying to light them all before Pac-Man reject ghosts snuff them out or the time limit runs out. The lightning flash mechanic refueling the level is quite nice and definitely added to the atmosphere of the game. A, once, a lot of fun once you get into it, but needs more challenge to be scarily good. Six out of of 10. See, I did not get that vibe. The arcadey action, it was not. Yeah. And Pac-Man Ghosts, they were. And I don't want Pac-Man Ghosts. I want scary ghosts. So yeah. that's, that's just me. Yeah. So let's talk about this, Boat. If you enjoy our Sinclair and want to support Oh yeah. So tell us what we've got here. I'm going to hold this up for the for the. Uh, if you enjoy our Sinclair. You don't have any really good arms there. So this is uh, the uh, this is a, a special uh, delivery from the futurewas8bit.com this is a uh, 
It's called the DIV MMC Future. Gosh, you memorized that. I did. You got a lot of brains, Froggy. And uh, this is an SD. It's a combo joystick adapter and SD card uh, interface, which allows you to instantly load games on your ZX Spectrum. Oh, man. Uh, whatever kind of spec you've got, this thing will work for it. Um, and uh, it, we are proud to officially announce the Future was 8-bit as an official sponsor of uh, our Sinclair. So, you got to have one of these, don't you, Boat? Absolutely. It, now, let me ask you a question. Which is easier, uh, the, your gimmick with your phone or SD card? Oh. <laughs> First of all, the gimmick with the phone w works approximately, I don't know, 15% of the time. <laughs> yeah. This thing, I'm going to be running through games like nobody's business. Oh, man. We'll never be able to stop you now, Yeah, bro. Computer Club is tomorrow night, and man, this thing is going we're to make an break, appearance. We're going to break this sucker in old school. Yeah, we are. That's very cool. And that's, and, and uh, hey, Future's a great, great outfit. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much, Future was 8-bit. Um, next week, Aaron, is a week... It's licensed title week on our Sinclair. Okay. And the one and only Pixels at Dawn, Clive's club member, Pixels at Dawn, has chosen the trap door for us to play. Now that, vague, is that based on a TV show? It is. is. I oh, think it's boy. based on a TV show. A so. very famous show. We, we, we actually covered, uh, I think the guy that did this did another very famous game that we covered. Yes, yes, I believe you are correct. So, Outstanding. we will learn all about that next week. Uh, I do want to remind everybody, we do record our Sinclair live every week on Twitch uh, at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. And uh, you can join the fine folks in chat, like Paul Kitchings here with us, Pixels at Dawn, Graham Vebke is with us, uh, Pack Billy, Operative 1010, Spence QLZ, L Curtis B., uh, thank you guys, Pick Hard 2010. I can't remember if I said that or not. Thank you guys so much for being with us live at this late hour for yep. all you fine folks in Europe. Um, well, that's it for this week. Oh, Bo, you forgot one oh, thing. Oh, yeah. If you want to dress in style like the one and only Aaron Dowdy, you can go over to amigatees.com and get the official Our Sinclair t shirt. It's luxurious and supple. It's luxurious. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Until then, rewind tape. And press play. All right. That's it. Adios, muchachos. See you guys later. I'm waving, but I don't have any opposable arms. <laughs>